Good evening, race fans, and welcome to the Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series for tonight's running of the life of a Sim Racer 300 from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. My name is Ola Bample. I've got Terry Bradford beside me in the broadcast booth with Hugo Louise down behind the cameras for tonight's production. Better late than never is what we always say. Despite some technical difficulties, we are ready to go racing for 200 laps for what will be the longest race uh, on the RSR calendar throughout the course of the year. We are already reaching the end of the month of May and we'll have that one week break next week before we swing on over to the Worldwide Technology Raceway to kick off racing in RSR competition over in June. So still a lot of racing left on the season. We'll get through all of the points and everything a little bit later uh, over the course of the night, but qualifying has already been completed. You can see drivers lined up and eager to get going. Agdal Phillip is on pole position. Matt Danson beside him on the front row. Brandon Bowie starts in third with Bradley Burke in fourth. Brandon Six is fifth. And Terry, Jerry Weimester rounds out sixth place. Yeah, looking back to seventh, Sam Nieto and Kevin King round out that row. And then Ross Cato, Nick Silver, ninth and tenth. Kyle Kramer and Michael Arar. Now I have Andrew Freenosh in 13th place. Connor Horn in 14th. Stanford is 15th. Miller is 16th. Eberhard is 17th. Michael Johnson is 18th. You got Thomas George, Timothy Johnson, Brian Chambliss, Joseph Diaz, Raleigh Grant Davis, and David Cobb rounding out 24th. 25th place holds Cody Harris with Brett McBride in 26th. Tom Wetmore is 27th. Brady Whitaker is 28th. Michael Kuczynski is 29th. And Sean Kalist is 30th. 31st is Nick Marr. Shane Ewing in 32nd. Tom Morano is going to round out 34th. William Smith at 34th. Chris Edwards 35th. And Sean Casto round out your 36th car field on the evening. 36 cars ready to go racing for 300 laps. That was a look top to bottom through your SK Sim Racing starting grid. The field rounding three and four. Really quick, Terry, what do you think we can expect from tonight's extra long race? 
wild and crazy. Uh, I really hope it doesn't turn into a, a snooze fest, but it's red, white, and blue. It's America's week as we look for Memorial Day weekend to come fastly upon us. And we're racing to the greatest day in racing next Sunday. Uh, we're going to see some cool stuff with Agno Phillip on the pole. Pace cars down and then. Thank you, race fans, for joining us here tonight. It's the life of a sim racer, 300, as we get set to go racing for 200 laps, 300 miles around America's home for motorsports. We're underway from Charlotte. Yeah, you got them double file back here, and that's not uncommon. The outside lane here uh, at the Charlotte Motor Speedway gives you a great uh, equalizer to get some momentum built up around here. These next-gen cars take a whole lot longer to build the speed than they did a year before. Uh, you can see right there, those two are side-by-side. -side. you got Silver and Horn, Cato and Miller. Uh, they've been going at it for the past three laps, but... Don't be surprised if the bottom lane doesn't begin to get looser and looser as the run progresses and you see a whole lot more people swing up to the hot side. And that is, of course, going to mean a lot of degradation for these tires around this 1.5 mile speedway. There is still the usual five sets total that these drivers will get to use. That means you've got four tire changes, which would include then the tires that you start on for today's race. So these drivers can have to be doing a lot of strategizing to make those tires last. You've got one essentially every 40 laps or so. So it's not going to be too bad to stretch it out. But if you get caught out by a caution at the wrong point and decide to stay out, you could be in a world of hurt come restart time. Yeah, you absolutely could be as you take a look back here with the four and the, the 13 going side by side. These two have been right on top of one another, uh, battling their way uh, into what would be the 11th place position. They're following Jeremy Miller here, uh, and Miller uh, has been one of the most consistent guys in this league. But you see what the 13's doing. He's riding the outside, uh, and then he gets a run, and now you see him. He's going to ninth place, and then he'll continuously go up. He's moving higher and higher uh, in an entry of the corner. And, I mean, that 13 machine, he's figured something out because nobody but him and maybe a few others – uh, have even bothered to arc the corner the way that he is. Stay it up off the groove. You see him now the onboard. He goes down to the, and then he makes a liar out of me. He goes down to the bottom. Look at him. It would have been a perfect entry, Miller. What are you doing? Of course, Jimmy Miller, winner in the All-Star Race just one week ago over at the Nashville Fairground Speedway, currently running ninth place after he started all the way down in 16th. So Miller has been on the move. In a hurry, Jerry Wymaster is right behind him, side by side with Kevin King in the number 31 Chevrolet. Sorry, that's actually just up the road is Connor Horn and Nick Silver. Got myself a little crossed up. He's in the middle of a couple of two-eyes sandwiches. Wymaster clears, trying to cut down in front of Jeremy Miller, but that 13 Chevrolet going to be working that inside lane and will try to put that Extreme Performance Motorsports 48 just a little bit further down the field. I know this is a total different package, a total different track, as that almost got hairy there between uh, the 48 and the 13 and the 4s. They were all in that little sandwich right there. One almost went into the wall as you take a long board look with one here. But for the 13 of Jeremy Miller to come off of the all-star win, and granted that was the Nashville Fairgrounds, and this is totally different. We go from six-tenths of a mile to a mile and a half in a long endurance race. I mean, uh, 200 laps around this track, 300 miles is an eternity uh, for all of us here that are doing it. And if you're one of the people that's going to do the Coke 600, it's even longer than this. So a, a good little testament. But for Jeremy Miller to come out here, come have the momentum that he has. Uh, he didn't win a prize, but hey, he got the bragging rights. He is the all-star winner uh, for the RSR League. And 
what better way to capitalize than to drive so far through the field? He's up five positions, and that's only second best to Michael Johnson, who's up eight uh, to the 10th place spot. It almost seems like he's being checked up. You saw him have to pack it up or would have run over Jay Weinmaster in turn three that last time by. He's got Lariah on his outside trying to carry some of the momentum through. Another little checkup, though. We'll back him up to Connor Hoare. Hoare wants to go, but that 67 Chevrolet can be patient. No point pushing it three wide just yet. Not 10 laps into a 200 lap event, right? I mean, there's no point in making a risky move like that. Heck, a lot of drivers will say it's not even worth making a risk like that until you're down to the final five. No, I agree, but I don't think that the 13 can run the bottom as good as he originally thought he could. Uh, this is the third time we've seen him have to check up from the bottom. Now, granted, Dirty Air does it again. So it's a little bit more of a check up there, but not as noticeable. Uh, you had to really be paying attention. He had a run on the 12. He also had a run on the 48, but could not take that run because the car's not sticking to the bottom. He was flat flying up here where Jaron Winemaster's running. Uh, about the second groove, a quarter of the way off of the bottom of the track, you know, getting some clean air to your nose not fully sending it into the corner with a bunch of dirty air on it which see the two by two battle right here now we try to make it and he goes back up there to that outside lane where he's been progressively faster than the field and he's also got a very fast uh, Andrew Freenage behind him that might put a little pep in your step too when you see that 88 back here Greenoff still having to work with Ross Cato in the number 12 Ford Mustang down on the inside line there. Miller making great use of both lines, right? He's doing an excellent job of managing these little runs, making sure that the Battle Beaver Mustang cannot make any sort of move to get around that number 13 guard of Jeremy Miller. I think Miller realizes that between Ross Cato and Freenage, while they might be dead even right now, Freenage is definitely the bigger threat amongst those two. So he's trying to use the, this traffic here as a little bit of a pick to keep him out in front as long as he possibly can. Also right behind Freenage and Cato, you've got the likes of Eric Stanford and Connor Horn. That is the fight just behind them for what is 15th place on the racetrack. Yeah, and I've just been very curious here over the first 14 laps of where everybody wants to run. Uh, all of a sudden, you start seeing more people go to the top, and then two laps go by, everybody wants to go to the bottom. It's a lot of mind games so far, early, or at least early on in this race. You, you don't want to throw all your cards on the table uh, because in, in a race like this, you talked about it. We have four to maybe five pit stops, depending on how the cautions fall. Uh, you know you have four sets of tires, plus the one that you have on here, so five all together. You don't necessarily want to use them all up if we get caution, uh, early caution, we get four in a row. You have to be strategic here, and you have to race this race backwards. If you go, okay, where do I put myself at lap uh, 199? Because if you can't think that far ahead, and well, you probably should have just did the Agnel Phillip approach and just be bad fast and go out there and gap the field by half a second. But for the guys back here, you have to get out of this traffic. Freenage had a miserable qualifying. He started well uh, in the back of this pack. I mean, he was 13th is where he started, and he's only moved up one position, Nolan. So not really a whole lot of moves happening, but the next-gen cars have proven that if you're going to pass, you have to be bad fast to do it because dirty air really hurts. Daniel Eberhard looking low on Eric Stanford's number 19 FXR Mustang. And I think Eberhard will just be able to uh, avoid himself from making that move. He'll tuck back in line between Stanford and Kyle Kamer. Now it is worth noting that there is going to be a lot of changing track conditions throughout this race. The time is currently sitting at just uh, below 5.30 p.m. in sim time. We are going to be racing into the evening, and I would imagine by the end of tonight's race, we will be racing under the lights at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. I think that's going to be one of the really, really big things that these drivers are going to have to really manage, right? They run a fixed setup. They cannot make adjustments, so they're going to have to race the track as that sun goes down and temperatures start to drop. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the track right now is slick. It's hot. And, and people ever seen a, a freshly... A uh, paved road of uh, uh, just pure asphalt out there on there. This is kind of like it. You know, you get the sun beaten down with the dynamic weather that you have in iRace, and obviously the track is going to be what uh, it would be in real world sim or in real world out there for what the drivers feel. All the heat 
just brings all the oil, all the slip to the top, and you, you have a little a sheet of, of, of oil. And what you would make feel like you're racing on ice, that maybe you're on the top of Pike's Peak uh, and you're just swirling around. But when the sun goes down, you pick up a whole lot more grip. Speed starts to go up. You get to get a little bit more confident in there. And then you also have to think, too, Nolan, there's going to be a ton of rubber laid down because by the time we see sunda uh, sundown, at least, we're going to be in the 130 lap mark of this race. So it could be an interesting show to see who's going to figure out both ends of the track. A good chunk of the field has already gotten themselves single file. There's only a few real battles here or there where they are going side by side. You just saw one come to its conclusion as Connor Horn gave up in his efforts to try to overtake Jeremy Miller. Everhart up high trying to make an attempt to get a run on Eric Stanford. But I think a lot of these guys are at this point in the preservation phase of this race, right? It's a long race. You want to make sure that you can save your stuff and save your car for when it's late in the run, when it is really, really going to matter. Right now, I'm sure you might be able to make up one spot, but if you put yourself into the wall, you could very well end up losing 10, 15 uh, in the long run, especially as the tires start to wear in, as lap times start to grow slower and slower, and even the slightest bit of damage. I've seen this taking place a lot this season the smallest ding of damage doesn't mean a whole lot in the moment but once those tires wear down that can sometimes equal to as much as half a second a lap slower well we've already fell a second off here i mean uh, you look at what the leader was running there with agnel Phillip. He, his fastest lap was a 30.1 he's already ran a 31.3 so in 22 laps we've seen a very big shift uh in this race and you're right you can't come into this race like a bull in a china shop because if you do, you're going to tear it up. You don't want to tear your equipment up before you get to the third leg of this race going into the home stretch of the Kentucky Derby. Uh, you can see the finish line, but it's going to take a while to get there. And, and you can't just be, you know, oh, I'm going to gung-ho and win this race on lap one, turn one. No, nah, if you come in with that aspect, something's wrong. But we saw with the drivers, you know, in, in the chat before the race during the, the delay here, they pretty much said that this should be an incentive to run as clean as possible because if we see any cautions out here, this race begins to go longer and longer and longer. 24 laps under are underway, and guess what? We're still caution-free, knock on wood. You better knock on wood because I guarantee you now somebody's going to do something that's going to make a caution take place. Daniel Leverhart, you just saw him rip around the outside of Jim Miller's edge setup shop Chevrolet but that has put Miller under fire now from Tim Johnston now one thing that has been pretty consistent across Charlotte races for what I've seen so far this week if you get out of groove with the guy or if you get aligned with all the other guys that are running you have the possibility to be freight train big time now typically that has happened when somebody steps out of line on the outside line they'll end up falling a bit further towards the rear of the pack typically like what you might see at a track like Talladega like Daytona so on and so forth but ever so often I have seen drivers end up lose some speed around the inside line and it looks like that's what's happened to Jeremy Miller here he's lost four spots just this one lap he lost one to Eberhardt then to uh, Kyle Kamer then to Tim Johnson and he just lost another one to Thomas George well, I mean, I don't want to speculate what's going on with the 13, but watching him here, you see him now. He's having to go below that line, and sometimes drivers do that to to really loosen the car up. And I, I know that sounds kind of crazy, but you're out there watching. You could agree or disagree with me here. That's what I found that's working. You know, if you get down there and you get below the yellow line, you get below that, you get onto the apron just a little bit, kind of helps the car turn a little bit. It, it, I think he's pushing a whole lot more. He couldn't hold the bottom uh, in the first part of this race, and he was running the outside lane, was able to carry more throttle, uh, didn't really have to get the car. But you see that he puts the nose down there, puts that red, the right front tire or the left front tire down below the apron and allows that car to rotate through the center of the corner. That's what's helping him here. He's having to back up more and then get the run off the exit to kind of help it turn a, a center off, at least to make it work. On board with Jeremy Miller, you can see some of the side-by-side -side battles up the road, but listen to his throttles. Hey, listen to that. Definitely lifting off big time on entry to turn number one, and that is definitely backing him up. You just saw what well, we could see David Cobb starting to 
close in, which would be just in his rearview mirror, which is likely what he's seeing right now, what he's more focused on. So these drivers not so flat out anymore. You can see ahead of all the side by battles up in front. Everybody in front of the likes of Andrew Freenos and Jerry Wymester has gotten this whole single file down. There's a pretty sizable gap, sometimes up to several tenths, and I believe there's one that is 1.3 seconds up the road there as well, which really goes to show these drivers are only slowing each other down by battling like this. No, absolutely. But you have to keep yourself entertained uh, over 200 laps, 300 miles for the life of a sim racer 300. You got to think, man, what do you want to see at the end of this race? Do you want to tear them up? Do you want to wad them? But you, do, you also don't want to give a, a, a lackluster show to the fans. There's 44 people out there watching. You have two people that are calling this race and you have a producer uh, who's Probably tired, more tired than we are uh, in a different part of the country. And he's out of here. But look at, they're putting on a show. They're putting on a show, pulling slide jobs off, but they're doing it in a safe manner. Uh, and granted, a lot of them are pushing tight as he's pushing here. The 19 almost got in the 48 right there. Uh, Winemaster and Eric Stanford almost put on a show, but it was a show that the people behind them did not want to see. And Wymister kind of chopped Stanford's nose. Stanford wasn't having anything of it, and he immediately juked to the inside. Look at the push. Oh, this contact. Door-to-door oh. -door contact. Wymister pulls clear for 14th. Eric Stanford tucks in line between himself and Tim Johnson. Good job there on Eric Stanford to get, keep that thing out from being a really nasty incident. And good job as well on Wymister for holding that as they rub doors side to side. Stanford bobbling again out of turn four. There's a lot of drivers uh, that are hoping that the caution comes out before lap or at lap 40 to keep the strategy in play. But you're going to see a lot of drivers uh, using a lot of different techniques. If you're pushing tight, you can make the car a little looser. Go up on the outside. Uh, go go do some stuff that helps you not have to roll out of the crack the throttle as much here. Uh, because the more you crack the throttle, the more the car wants to push up the racetrack. You see the 56 here. Gets a great launch off of the exit there. This is going to be entertaining to see. 33 laps in, you got drivers to the outside that are tight. The drivers who are looser are down on the bottom. And we're going to see which uh, which portion of this race really grows because, oh, man, they're, <laughs> they're getting racier. They're starting to dice it out right around the midway point in this field. Tim Johnson still fighting the inside line on Eric Stanford. Kamer's pushed up to the outside lane as well, trying to fend off Jeremy Miller. Thomas George wants to find a hole between these two side-by-side -side drivers. But it's not going to be an easy run for Thomas George to sort this one out. In fact, he might be split as Kamer looks high. Miller down low. Pack of five, and you still got... About four other cars right behind them, also with this little bit of a micro pack, I guess you could say, uh, for the time being. But it looks like they're going to keep it all sorted for now. Everybody's been very, very civilized out there on the racetrack. These RSR races have a tendency to be very, very chaotic in the opening for 20, 30 laps or so, but not so at a track like this. And I think that is actually completely due to the extended distance. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if this race was. 100 miles or 150 miles everybody's going to be on the loud pedal and you're not going to see any lifting you'll see a car push tight they're like, i don't care i'm going to push into you uh you have to gain track position somehow this like i said there's two different mindsets coming into this race my mindset would be right about seventh to tenth the where you see silver all the way down to johnson uh, Pray that the cautions fall your way. Maybe trap some guys down like Agnel Phillip or Matt Danson or somebody on pit lane. Uh, trap them one lap down or trap them to the tail end of the field and make them have to work their way up there. Flip track position. You start up front on the last little part here. But you see this battle between Lorara uh, and Silver. Silver's running the Kyle Larson line. Like he's all the way up against that wall dang near in turns three and four really getting the run off the exit. You see him starting to gain. Look, he's just creeping higher and higher uh, around the Charlotte Motor Speedway. And that's the highest I've seen anybody go so far in 37 laps. That's pushing it. That's pushing it this early. Like, that's that's disaster waiting to happen if he puts one wheel out of place. You see Silver really running the high side. It really is the battle of the RSR video series, I guess you could say, right? I mean, you got the after the turns Chevrolet on that inside line driven by Michael O'Brien. Of course, that is a podcast recapping 
RSR competition, but it's not the only one. You've got the Life of a Sim Racer number four of Nick Silver. Now, Life of a Sim Racer is actually a series that is headed up by Brandon Bowie, where he goes over some of his RSR adventures and throughout that latest week. And I have to say, it's part that Nick Silver's winning. And of course, this race is sponsored by the Life of the Sim Racer video series for the time being, giving us the Life of the Sim Racer 300. So Nick Silver trying to represent here and doing so perfectly as he has just cleared the After the Turns podcast Chevrolet, as well as one of his LOASR uh, teammates. Well, Brandon Bowie on the inside line, the host of said video series. Yeah, and you, you see them all in a line with one another, right? They're they're right there, and obviously you have uh, the the race within the race. Obviously, you you're the title sponsor of this race. You want to finish ahead of the guy who does another podcast about the same stuff. Uh, but you have different aspects. You have different opinions of what happened during the race. Brandon Bowie has had a phenomenal season so far. Has had some bad luck strike him, uh, and and I'm going to sit down tomorrow and actually go through and watch uh, what what he puts on there, but. To see the battle between Nick Silver uh, and Lariya, different aspects of the game, different spectrums of what they want. One's out here, hey, you know, let's let's go win the race. Everybody wants to win the race, but one could potentially be battling for a spot into the playoffs. The other one has had a consistent enough season that, well, if we don't see any more winners, first-time winners this year, I could be punching their ticket to the playoffs. So uh, there's a lot of different storylines within this race that could play out. Uh, because if you mess up on lap 50 or lap 60 of this race, well, your race is virtually over. So you don't want to put yourself in a box. This is not the only battle throughout the field as well. Agnell Phillip has really extended, well, he had extended the gap at least at the start of the race. As you can probably see on the SK's Embracing leaderboard, that gap has shrunk down quite significantly. So it could be an interesting race for the for those top spots on the boards as in fact making the move now Bradley Burke to the inside he's done waiting around Phillip pulls out and clears on the high side I wonder if Phillip has potentially uh, used the ball of stuff early he pulled out such a massive gap with Bradley Burke early in this race but very very gradually Kevin King and Mac Dancer have both been reeling both of those top two guys in and now they are all in a very thick scrap with each other for those top four spots. Yeah, and, and Phillip still holds the race lead with Burton second. You got King working his way, makes contact. Whoa. That's big contact uh, with, with Matt Danson there, but was able to save it. King falls back to fourth. And with, like you said, Bradley Burks worked his way up here. It was at one point in time a half a second to a full second lead. Now it's there. Agnel Phillip is loose off the exit of the corner, and now it's the 95's chance to pounce. Maybe he's going to the outside here. Take some low. Here we go. Phillip running that outside lane, but he's too far up out of the groove. You're not going to get a good run being that far up the racetrack. Bradley Burke trying to hold the speed on the bottom, but it's going to be too little to be able to make the pass stick. Agnel Phillip clears on the outside lane, entering turn number three. Danson and King both being patient drivers right behind waiting for these top two to mess up we're side by side again with the race lead as they hit start finish nothing separated them at the line and so far Agno Phillips doing a good job on hanging on but I think Bradley Burke might have him in turn one and in fact he does Bradley Burke clears for the race lead out of turn number two and for the first time on lap 45 we have a new race leader yeah and that right there is just a product of Agnel Phillips, long run car. We'll put that in the bank and store it for later. 44 was the magic number for, for Burke to catch him. So he has the short to mid run car. But once we get past that, you started seeing Burke and King and Danson really start to put the throttle down, was able to carry more, I would say, mechanical grip through the center of the corner. Uh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, I thought Danson just popped the wall and he barely scraped it there. But uh, it, these cars push really tight in dirty air. And, and that's what really surprises me is that I thought with the opening of the grill, uh, when you had more air pushing to the motor, that these cars would really get behind to be able to work the air more and that dirty air wouldn't become a thing. Uh, you would have a little bit uh, to hit the front bumper, but not a whole lot would really mess the cars up. But you're seeing now, Agno Phillip was so used to having clean air, now he's in the dirty air. That car looks worse than it's looked all race long. 
And I think now that we are getting closer to the quarter mark of the race, I think pit stop strategies could start to become a really big question for a lot of these drivers in the field. Now, typically, the way these races tend to go, people come in to get four tires of fuel, right? That's typically how things go if we manage to make it to half the point of the race. A lot of drivers like to make the one stop work as we check out some of our mid pad battles. However, I did see another league race on uh, la or this past Friday night. Also ran a 200 lap race at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Also, through changing time conditions such as this one, there was almost nobody that took four tire stops. In fact, a lot of them took two tire stops. They would actually take two tires on the right sometimes to loosen up the car. They would take two tires on the right to tighten up the car. And they did this to get around the fact that you can't adjust the fixed setup to account for the change in track conditions. I, I wonder if we've seen drivers experiment a little, bit, a, a little bit with that here tonight as well. Well, and I, I like that strategy, right? That's a perfect strategy and a perfect illustration from you to pay attention to something. That's a small detail that most people don't really look at when it comes to the fixed setup portion of iRacing. You're right. One side is going to make it tighter. One side's going to make it looser. And you see right now with Agnel Phillip, he's starting to push tight. Uh, he's. It looks like he's tight on, on entry. He's loose on exit. You're not going to make a whole lot of that right there as Brandon Six comes down. He's one of our heavy hitters that was in the top ten. He comes down pit lane for the first time. We'll see what he takes on, on this initial stop. Uh, my personal preference would be I'm taking two right side tires, uh, you know, one of the first one. It looks like he's taking all four so he's going to fill it up full of fuel take all four tires but i would take two on the right side because you're tearing the right side more than you're tearing the left up here anyhow once you load in the corner that's what's going to tear it up first but yep brandon six back on the track four tires we'll see what he throws down on the board and pitted out a 17th place and i think that pretty much opens up the pit window for a lot of drivers now in this race we'll no doubt be seeing a lot of these other guys starting to come on in within the next at fifth, or I would say between now and 20 laps from now, I think it's about a safe window we can be looking at for a lot of the drivers down in the field to make their first pit stops on the day. There you can see Edwards in the lane. He pitted from 32nd place. He's down in 33rd now, and he is now leaving the lane. He also took four tires and a full tank of fuel. Speaking of drivers that are laps down, there are two that are out of this race. Those drivers are Nicholas Mara and Michael Kuczynski. They both came down with 17 laps to go. A couple of drivers, uh, well, they weren't quite able to make it for the whole round. But hey, starting hard, you still get more points than if you didn't make the start at all. That's absolutely true. And you see this battle right here. Uh, that would be the Andrew Freenage machine with the 67 of Connor Horn. They're fighting for the ninth place position here on the racetrack, just right behind uh, Mr. Johnson up there in the eighth place position. And now you see the 90 of Daniel Eberhardt make his way in there. The, the two Battle Beaver machines battling their way through the field and up to the front as Agnel Phillip uh, is one of the first lead cars to come down pit lane. And this is very interesting because he wasn't. He wasn't that far off of Burke. If he flips this and takes four, he better hope that Burt King and Danson take four or, or they're checking out. Pulling into the pit box. We'll see what I know Phillip Ops to do on the strategy for the A51 Pro Chevrolet. Two tires on the right. That is, I think, of no contest, really. And I think that's what a lot of these drivers are going to go for is at least the full four while the sun is still up and the tires are great on all sides. It's like the others, we'll take all four. I think that's one thing to note as well about those two tire strategies that I mentioned a little while ago. They were all taking place after the sun had fully set. So that might be something we see some drivers doing later in the race, maybe within the second half of the race. But while the sun is still up, I think four tires is definitely the safest way to go, considering how much of a track or how much degradation the tires wear on the track like this. Yeah, it's like a cheese grater out here. I mean, this this racing surface is, I, I, I know. You know, it, this is this is sim, this is simulation. But obviously, teams use this as a model to move yourself onto the racetrack. And there's tons of people that came in from the All-Star race last night, or will come in tomorrow morning and instantly hit the sim to prepare for the Coca-Cola 600. So this is going to be 
the, the most intriguing race when you start to see tire wear at 18 inch wheel. Uh, and I've raced a lot of the next gen on here. And granted, we're not 100% sim wise of what the next gen car uh, has to offer, what we've seen on the real life circuit so far. But the 18 inch wheel really makes it a little bit different because you're not going to you're not going to heat one side of the tire up more than you heat the other uh, with the caster and the camber. It depends on where this setup is. I know they make these setups, you know, beforehand. So they, they go in, they test the setup, they get the setup ready, they throw it out there. It depends on if you have too if you have too much camber in it and you're rolling just on the inside of the or the outside of the tire to where you put heat in it. It's gonna determine what we're gonna see here as we saw some smoke there. We got a battle here between Sam Nieto and that that's Daniel Everhart working up again on the outside. It's a battle for sixth place for the time being. Look at Everhart Arkin to then diamond off the corner. He is going to rip around the outside lane of the Miller number two for Mustang. So the flat out motorsports driver will fall down one and he'll be sitting in lucky position number seven and right up the road. Sean Kalis is going to lap down. He was just passed by Nick Silver, who's in fifth, and now got to be passed up here by Daniel Everhart as well. And sure enough, the SK Sim Racing Mustang going to keep it to the outside line. You can see a fair bit of damage though on the right side of that number 43 car. So I think the pace difference that we're seeing, that's the pace between cars without damage and cars that do have damage, really kind of drill, driving over the point about how bad damage can impact your performance. Yeah, it's an aero game, especially at a track like this. If you can't get full throttle, uh, you can't really, you know, get much momentum. But put this in our notes as well. You look at fast drivers on the racetrack right now. Granted, Bradley Burke just put the fastest lap amongst the guys who have not pitted yet. But Daniel Eberhardt, without that pass there on the bottom, running that outside lane, has been consistently the fastest driver on this track. And we're 60 laps in, and they still have not come down pit lane yet. So another check mark if we get a long run towards the end, and we're kind of closer, Everhart's had to make a lot of passes. He came from the 17th position, and it's taken him a while to get there. But now he's here. He's knocking on the door of the top five. He sees Nick Silver uh, up in his way, and he could potentially catch him. But I believe he's going to have to make that pass on the outside because, well, Nick Silver's going to make it difficult. I, I don't see him making the pass on the bottom, especially with how not how you know the car is driving better up top than it is on the bottom. Hard to see Everhart really starting to howl the likes of Nick Silver. I think really showing just how much Everhart was being held up by a lot of those battles in the mid pack. He started all the way down down in 17th, and he's about to break into the top five and. We're not even halfway through tonight's race. Now we're just past the quarter, but he wasn't able to get the good run there that he needed. Great through the entry in the middle of the corner, but Nick Silver easily had him beat on the exit. And you now see Bradley Berg dropping down the order. That's because he is in a pit road. So your race leader making the trip down into the pit road, and he's not the only one. Jerry and Wymaster entering the lane right behind him. So I think now we'll be seeing the brunt of green flag stops coming for a lot of guys in the field. Oh, yeah, when the heavy hitter dropped, when the guy leading the race said, hey, man, I'm tired of these tires. I'm going to come down pit lane real fast. Kevin King's going to have to come down. He's going to have to come down rather quickly. You, you see the 90. It looks like the, he's going to try to come down here. Nope, no come down yet. Got a little tight on the bottom. Fresh tires to the outside. That's Agnel Phillip working his way. Respectful move. You, you definitely didn't have to race him that clean. You could have held him up a little bit. But these guys are really respectful. I mean, granted, a lot of these drivers are on probation or are in the penalty point area, in the gray area of what you can do. You can't really, you know, be too aggressive. But I'm just saying, if, if I had nothing to lose there, I'm, I'm going to block that 94 just to say, hey, look, no, I'm not going to give you the spot. It's Kevin King comes in, Matt Danson's in. Oh, oh, oh slow her down, boy. Oh. Slow her down. Yeah, he got her. Talk about really pushing the boundaries of what's allowed. Daniel Everhart pitted in. See Shane Huey exiting his pit stall right behind. You've also got Matt Danson and Kevin King. Both those drivers also into the lane as well. Also coming to the pit road. William Schmidt has just made the trip down. As you look at the team machine, and Daniel Everhart both taking their own pit stops. Michael Araya, current race leader, coming in. So is Nick Silver and more. 
That was scary right there for Daniel Everhart. I really thought that he was going to be speeding. <laughs> he locked them bad boys up. And he, he better have took four tires, in which he did, because he squealed them things. I, I didn't think he was going to make it. I had to go double check myself to see what his speed was, and he was he was clocking it. Like, it, it, you, you ever been on I-95 or 65 or whatever? Oh, car in the wall. But uh, you ever been ever been on the interstate and you're driving as fast as you can? You see a cop, and you're like, oh man, you smash the brake. That's that's kind of what Daniel Everhart did right there. He's like, man, the popo's after me, and then just smash the brake like Ricky Bobby and Talladega Nights. So far, a lot of these drivers are having some good stops. Nobody having too many difficulties just yet. You did just see the likes of Bradley Burke get a bit crossed out. Was not expecting Chris Evers to be so slow to the corners. And I mean, when you're this, when you're on fresh tires the first time in the race, it is very, very easy to get caught out, especially when you take into account all the drivers throughout the field that haven't had a whole lot of time to get probably accustomed with racing on fresh tires around guys that have been out on a full field run at a track like this at this point you've had over half the field caution flag is out for the first time today and it is Braden Whitaker on the back straightaway you can see the smoke so caution out for the first time today right in the middle of pit stops this could easily trap half the field a lap down Oh, and it is. Tenth on bat, one lap down as we take a look at the replay here. Oh, four's coming off the pit lane. Uh, oh, oh wow. God, just hit the bump. Just hit the bump right there coming off. But this is going to trap a lot of people. Tenth on back, one lap down. Uh, and you remember what I said earlier in, in the event, right? When I said, if you're one of those people like Nieto, all the guys that were sitting tenth on back, guess what? flip track position guess where they're at now on the lead lap uh, we didn't know Sam Nieto was running seventh uh, he was seventh he's the leader and he's going to cycle back out with fresh tires because Agnel Phillip can't come down and pit Burke can't come down and pit six or king or dancing they ain't coming down and wasting a set of tires because then it puts them at a disadvantage so with Nieto Davis Kammer fresh tires oh and also uh, the drivers who were on pit lane at the time of caution, still on the lead lap. They don't have to pit. They go right on the back bumper of those machines that are on five to ten lap old tires. This, this is a game changer. And it could also jumble this field up. And we could see a big old wreck if one spins the tires in the front couple rows. Well, there's a few pretty nasty bumps when you're exiting pit road. A lot of them are pretty close to the racetrack, except for that one that Braden Whitaker hit. That's pretty far down the racetrack. And a lot of drivers don't hit that bump because they have already been merged onto the racetrack by the time they get to where the bump is. The reason why Braden Whitaker was so far down, well, he got aggressive and overtook Sean Kalis on pit exit before he could come out onto the racetrack. That's a prime example of why passing on pit out or pit exit is not really advised at any racetrack i'm surprised it's it's showing me that agnel phillip came down pit lane there uh that is surprising i would say unless he's coming down for fuel only tires should have not been on his mind unless he's going to push this stint out as far as he can uh in in just attempt to not take all four sets or to take all four sets granted uh you, you look at it here Grant Davis. So Nieto's going to start second here uh, with Davis, Camber, and King. Flip the track position. That's a perfect strategy for the four drivers. Grant Davis flipped 20. Uh, he started 23rd. Now put him to P3. Uh, this is this is tough. Uh, this is so tough because there's either there's going to be a ton of wave around cars too. Uh, uh, this 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 makes crew chiefs around the world scratch their head. Well, don't forget, Agnel Phillip is still in sixth place. And that's because of all, of all the cars that were, again, had already pitted and they were now a lap down. Phillip was one of the few cars that had pitted very, very early. So cycle right back through to the front. So Phillip, despite making that extra pit stop, is still in sixth place and will cycle through to be outside line on the third row. Whereas all the other drivers are going to be, well, having to line a single file behind him. So this is honestly a bit of a strategy here for Phillip because he has essentially got a free pit stop. 
Yeah, but I mean, tire wise, obviously you look at it, we could break this race into into fours, right? Mm -hmm. You could break it into thirds. You have your first initial stint where they started waving down pit road a lap, around lap 60 to 65. Some people stretched it all the way out to 60, uh, 69 when some of the drivers decided to come down pit lane. But, but, uh, you would think that maybe, just maybe, somebody would have, they would have just stayed on the racetrack. I, I'm, I'm curious why Agnel Phillip came down, but he's a, he's a much smarter driver than I am. I, I just wouldn't have done it. I, I don't, I wouldn't have came down and took tires. I think I would have took track position in P2. Well, now that we're under the caution period, I was looking for a point where we could potentially go over the point standings because uh, we typically do that before the race starts. But obviously, with all of the delays, I wanted to get into things pretty quickly here uh, for a real sim racing competition. But uh, now we have a chance to do that under the caution flag here very briefly. And I do believe you've still got Brandon Sakes leading the points. Obviously, he's got three wins so far on the season. He's locked into the playoffs along with guys like Freenosh, Kevin King, Connor Horn. Philip Danson, Eberhardt, Cody Harris is, I believe, the actual driver leading the overall points for the time being, but he has not won a race so far today. So there is a good chunk of drivers that still are without wins, but are definitely still technically locked in. Well, not locked in, but they are currently within that bracket for uh, playoff competition. Those drivers include Harris, Bowie, Silver, Burke, uh, Michael Johnson, Thomas George, Timothy Johnston, Casto, Rabel, and Nieto. Rhett McBride, so far the first driver out, but only by one point. Yeah, I, I, this race is going to be make or break. We Obviously, we go into an off week next week for Memorial Day. But when we come back to the Worldwide Technology Center at Gateway, that's when you have to have your championship mentality on. You, you really have to turn the wick up for that summer stretch of racing because we go – damn near all the way to the end of the race or to the end of the season without taking a break so that's when you have to get it going but this strategy here nieto's on fresh tires by seven laps compared to bradley burke because we're about to go green green fly back in the air and a single file restart for all intents and purposes of just about everybody on the lead lap but we are back green flag racing. Bradley Burke has taken off with Nieto, Davis, Philip Kamer, and Brandon Six all in tow. But look out for Adel Phil. Now on fresh rubber, trying to fight his way through to the race lead. Yeah, and he fought his way up to fourth so far there. I, I question the move, but I don't question his racing uh, intellect. He's a very smart racer, and Agnel Phillip knows what he's doing. I just don't know if he took tires there or if he just came down for fuel. I would imagine with a 19 second pit stop or a 14 second pit stop, he took four tires and filled her up, right? He's gonna try to flip this and, and stay on the same strategy, but he can stay at a couple laps extra. It gives him an opportunity to go out here and race against people who didn't have very many laps on their tires either with Nieto and Davis who were on pit lane at the time of the caution. Uh, and now everybody's back on the lead lap, and there's a lot of antsy people who got trapped a lap down that want to get back to the front, like Bowie, Eberhardt, Freenage, Johnson, Loria. They all want to get back to the promised land of the front as Agnel Phillip uh, gets underneath the 24 there for a split second. Rounding lap 75, and already Bradley Burke has pulled out a pretty sizable gap. Agnel Phillip not able to take advantage of that fresh rubber because he is being held up by a lot of the drivers also fighting it out for podium positions most notably grant davis and sam Vieto looking low trying to get around davis into turns one and two but i think at this point he's burned off what little advantage he might have had and now he's on even footing with everybody else in this field we'll have to continue to see what Phillip will be able to make out of this race but so far it's not looking really pleasant that might have been a backfired strategy as there's a little bit of trouble behind from what I'm hearing between Rhett McBride as well as uh, Tom Wetmore. Yeah, and I, looking at the lap times here when they come across, they're faster. Uh, uh, the Sam Nieto just ran a 30.1 compared to a 30.2, a tenth faster uh, than Bradley Burke. And if you go back, 
the, the uh, three and four, they're a tad bit slower uh, than what our leader Burke ran and for what Sam Nieto in that Rusty Wallace throwback scheme for the Miller High Life days. Phillip putting a nose down below the apron there, trying to loosen that car up, trying to get the back end, get more speed off a of center exit. Uh, interesting move. You look at uh, some of the other battles, they've already checked out. Right, they've checked out almost a two and a half seconds uh, from going all the way back to, to six and King and dancing. And a lot of those drivers, Nolan, their caution's out. Never mind. Caution flag is out, and it's a bit of a mess over at turn number two, I believe. This one started with Daniel Everhard, and this actually might have been a collision between both of the Battle Beaver racing machines, which would be a bit of an awkward uh, moment if that is indeed what has happened. We'll see here entering turn one. Everhard's trying to block. No. Oh, yeah, did get tipped by Andrew Freenosh. You can see, I think Michael Johnston also got tipped around right in the back. And whoa! Oh, oh my gosh, Winemaster. What a save. What a miss for Winemaster. Man, that's a blink of an eye right there. I, I, <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was crazy. So second caution on the night. Woo! And I think this is the caution that a lot of those guys that were caught out by the last round of pit stops, very, very grateful. We'll take a look on board with <laughs> Jeremy Wymaster. This is from the cockpit view. Look at all the smoke in front. Can't see, can't see, can't see. Oh, hello. There's Everhart. Got to get low. Don't even, I don't even think he realized the other cars were down there still. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you see it in his mirror right there. I, I, I actually was even taken aback watching the replay. Uh, obviously, I have the broadcast up, and I was sitting there watching the replay more and more. Uh, and that, a blink of an eye, a, a half a snap of the finger, uh, and he's getting popped by the 39 of Michael Johnson and just barely missed him. I mean, that was wild. A wine master just had the save of the race. Unless something crazy happens like last night in the All-Star race with Chastain and Kyle Busch, that's the save of the race. A few drivers made a second round of pit stops down under this latest caution. Those drivers included William Schmidt, uh, Nick Silver, Kyle Kamer, Brandon Bowie, as well as Kevin King. Now, all of these guys were drivers that did not have damage on their cars. Here's another look at the incident. Michael Araya was right behind, and oh, he uh, actually just escaped that around the outside lane as well. And you can see everything behind. There's YMSR just parting the seas. I'll tell you what, I think... Uh, one other driver that should be noted in that as well, Michael Johnson. He was in that crash as well, yes, but he could have hit that inside tire wall, and he's pretty lucky that he didn't. Yeah, it was, this this was could have been a, a big mess uh, if the drivers didn't have a, a, a real good sense of what could happen, because obviously you can't control what you can't control, and, and right there, Eberhardt, could have stayed on the racetrack could have tried to gun it to spin the car back around but he really would have it would have pulled a disservice and he would have messed a lot of people's race up but the fact that he hit the brake it, it looked like he downshifted a little bit there uh, when i was listening to his his in car it's like he downshifted pulled it back tried to get the throttle in it to pull the car backwards i uh, didn't throw it in reverse obviously because then he really would have backed up into andrew freenage but was able to spin the tires back a little bit, catch some grip, catch some traction, pull it backwards. That, that was, uh, that, that just ruined Agnel Phillips' strategy up, by the way. I think this is, as I was mentioning before, this is the caution that a lot of the guys that were really caught out by that first caution were really hoping for, because they had to start that first yellow, uh, or that, I guess it's just the first restart back to green, they had to start that single file because they had to stay out to get waved around the pace car so they could even be on the lead lap but now they're going to be able to be doubled up and we'll be seeing a bit of a more traditional restart uh, in rsr competition so we'll see what a lot of those guys in the back will be able to do i mentioned that a few drivers did come down including the likes of kevin king brandon Bowie, and nick silver but unlike agnell phillip they actually have lost a boatload of spots some of them as many as 10 to 20 spots uh, a piece how do you reckon that might factor in as these drivers will have to work their way back up through the field? Patience, 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 patience. Like you got to have some. I mean, looking back here, Nick Silver involved in the accidents. 
23 uh, spots lost. Obviously, with every winner so far, with Grant Davis being up 19, there's a big loser. Uh, the biggest losers in the race, Brandon Bowie down 13 spots. He had a, a, a top three going for him. Caution comes out, ruins that. Uh, minus nine for Eric Stanford was running in the top 10. Uh, gone. Jeremy Miller was having a phenomenal race in the early part. 28th, he minus 12 spots. There was a ton of people who were making traction towards the front. They're going to have to have patience to get back up here. There's going to be a lot of comers and goers. The sun's starting to set. I'm starting to see more shadows into turns one and two than what we saw before. They're going to have to let the track come to them to get through this field. You are absolutely correct. We uh, get closer and closer to nighttime racing at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. The first portion of this race did actually go relatively smoothly, so we'll see if we will continue to have a smooth race as we get further and further uh, into the overall race tonight. Pace car coming around through three and four. And once again, it will be within the hands of Bradley Burke to take us back to the green flat. The number 95, Chevrolet for Flat Out Motorsports out of turn four, approaching that restart zone, and we find ourselves back green flag racing in the life of a sim racer 300. What a gorgeous start for the bottom. The two of Nieto is going to be able to work his way down to the bottom. The single file train for the top three as the 24 gets trapped to the outside. He'll slide down in front of Grant Davis and check up the bottom just a little bit there. Uh, it's two by two for seventh, eighth, and ninth. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's go time for a lot of these drivers. So we get ourselves back to green flag racing. Bradley Burke still leads the way. Saw a little bit of smoke on the front straightaway, but no caution. So whatever had happened uh, must have not been too much of an issue for a lot of the guys uh, in this field. So we're going to continue our green flag racing, hopefully with what will be another long green flag run like what we had at the start of the race, where we went green flag racing for the first 60 laps or so without really any incident at all. Yeah, I mean, they really put on a show in that first little bit. And granted, bunching them back up every now and again isn't a bad option. It's, it's, it always brings some excitement, brings some flavor. You don't want to see a guy out there winning uh, by 13, 14 seconds like we saw with Martin Truex Jr. Uh, in the Coke 600 in, in 2019. You don't want to see that kind of race uh, be played out where he just leads every lap. Obviously, we've seen Bradley Berkeley laps. Agnel Phillip was up there. Same Nieto led some laps before the caution came out. There's been a lot of drivers that has sniffed that race lead, but uh, the top three has been the top three for majority of the night for very good reason. They're very fast, consistent drivers. But don't look now. Uh, Mr. I can win any race I'm in, Brandon Six, uh, he's up to fifth, and, and he's throwing some bangers out here. Uh, he's throwing 30.2s. He's only a hundredth off of the leader and two hundredths off of second place. He's coming through this field. Watch out for the 66 before this race is over. Don't forget, you've also got road course winger Matt Danson right behind him in the Logitech G Altus Esports number 38 Chevrolet. And a bit of a more unusual paint scheme when you consider the colors for Logitech G Altus Esports are typically, you know, orange, white, blue. Here it's red, white, and kind of a darker blue as well. So a lot of the drivers going with that, a little bit more of the patriotic uh, paint scheme that is typically found with. Uh, the real world running of the 600 mile race at the same venue yeah and and you know obviously we enjoy racing everybody enjoys to come out here on the sim and, and watch the coke 600 which is uh, a part of the greatest day in motorsports with f1 uh, going out and running and then you got the indy 500 and then the coke 600 to tap it all off and and just to end the night in a patriotic way to thank every service member past present uh, and in people who are, are aspiring to go in 
and do everything. We, we just honor that here. It's a cherished part of our history of, of this nation, of people who have fought and bled for our land and our country. I, I love America so much. I was going to be full decked out in red, white, and blue to come on the show, but found out you broke your camera. Uh, back to plan B. We're back in sweats. So it was a good time. <laughs> But, you know, to see people being patriotic at, at this race in particular, the Charlotte Motor Speedway puts on one heck of a show uh, for the troops, for the fans that come in. They give a, they give almost a thousand tickets away to service members uh, across the, the nation. It, it is just a phenomenal, a phenomenal event. I, I love it. And I mean, I, I served for seven and a half years and I couldn't think of a better way than than sitting down and watching the Coke 600 on a, on a Sunday evening just, just to see how much they love this country and, and what they really do to show how much they love this country. And, of course, tonight's running of the life of the Sim Racer 300, as it is with a lot of the other races in RSR competition, mimicking uh, the real-world NASCAR Cup Series by running 50% race length. Uh, well, races, I guess you could say, uh, throughout the course of their season as they have been for so many years past and will no doubt be doing so for so many years in the future the way things are continuing to look with us continuing to pull some great action honestly in my opinion some of the better stock car racing actually you can probably find out there on the i racing service because not only are the fields large but the racing is exciting but more importantly it's clean as well a clean racing and exciting racing two words that don't tend to go uh, together too much especially when it comes to the stock car racing scene traditionally but you got yourself a solid league like what you got here and you can have yourself a solid race just about anywhere heck these guys find ways to make even road courses like circuit of the americas an, an, an absolute thrill to watch and we did to see them do that later on throughout the season as well you had seen matt danson trying to make an overtake on brandon six wasn't able to make that pass work so he's tucked in line for sixth place. He'll continue to try to fight his way up into the top five, though, hopefully not before long. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing a single file train all the way back uh, to 10th, and, and they're only a second gap from one another, you know, or two second gap from one another. It's not a whole lot uh, going on in the front. You see the 38 trying to make the pass there. Matt Danton has been just phenomenal all season long, uh, but he's a little bit slower uh, than, than what I thought he would be. He's three one hundredths faster, obviously, than uh, than Brandon Six at the moment. But I, I wouldn't sleep too much on, on that car either. Danson is one of those guys that could come up and, and sneakily get you. You know what I'm saying? This this race is going to obviously go into the nighttime. We're close to halfway. The sun's starting to set. Shadow and turns one and two. So complete different parts of the track you're going to enter the corner with a ton of grip you're not going to exit the corner with a ton of grip as there's cars in the back straight away uh, looks like they were having some issues with one another it's not uncommon to see a lot of the drivers having incidents caution. As caution is out for the third time today right before halfway and this one being kicked off by Sean Castos, you see him rejoining the racing service you were just talking about drivers getting loose out of turn two and considering where Casta was pulling back onto the racetrack, do you reckon that might have had a hand to say in exactly what happened there? I mean, like I said, you, you enter the corner and you think you have a ton of grip because obviously the sun's down. You got a lot of grip. <laughs> People don't realize that the... I'm sorry, I, I'm not going to say this one, but this game uh, isn't realistic. This game's pretty realistic, and yeah, he just he just flat got Whoa. loose. There's nothing he could do. Tried to catch it, caught the 25. Uh, not a good not a good luck so far for the 25 machine to Brian uh, Chambliss, but that's a product of it. You enter the corner, think, oh my goodness, I could flat foot this thing, and then you start to get more and more into the sun. You're like, oh man, I can't flat foot this thing, and you just break loose off a center ex or off a corner exit, and you're not going to be able to do what you can do. So this is going to throw a lot of wrench because Kyle Kammer, he stayed out here uh, and everybody else decided to come in. Eric Stanford stays out. Mix a strategy here, Nolan. It's not the only one. Kyle Kammer also stayed out on the racetrack. So they'll inherit one, two. So will Andrew Friedas. She takes third. I'll stay now. Just about everybody else in a pit road. 
Looks like four tires and fuel seems to be the overall strategy for drivers throughout this field. Kevin King is the first of these drivers to leave pit road. He is the one of the only drivers, though, that took right sides only. So I knew we'd see the two-star strategy being used at some point throughout the course of the night. And it looks like Kevin King first want to put that into use. Now, about this caution as well, you we saw, of course, how Sean Casto had slid it out and he drifted up into the 25 car. But did you notice how Chambers was already going pretty slowly out of turn two as it was? It makes me wonder if maybe there wasn't even something else that had been contributing up the road, which maybe Castle could have even been reacting to. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton going on out of two. There's a ton going on out of four. We could talk about it all day long. That This track with the sunlight beating down on it, and it's gotten hotter and hotter. You know, they always say, the coldest part of the morning is when the sun's barely creeping over the the, the the edge of the clouds, right? When you start to see the peak, the, the army calls it the stand two. That stand two is the coldest moment of your life because in that 30 minute span, you could jump five to 10 degrees, right? It's cold, you're freezing, you're miserable. It just feels miserable. But towards the end of, end of the night, the latter parts of the evening, the sun's starting to set back down. You're getting that last little glare of it there the, and you right here with the cars, you had 98 laps on these uh, on this track. You're putting some heat in it. You're putting some rubber in it. You're making it slipperier and slippier. And then the moment the sun goes down, you're like, huh? It's like the traction compound just got blasted into I race and it's on this track because all of that rubber turns into a nice little layer of grip and you're just gonna slide right through it. And it's gonna be a perfect opportunity. We might see it here with Kyle Kamer leading this race to where his tires are old, but this caution gives him an opportunity to clean them up, put, let the heat out of them. You got one more cycle. He might catch a quickie yellow and hell, he might be the one that has the winning strategy just by staying out here on lap 98. Two laps away from halfway in the life of a sim racer 300. Lights still on aboard the iRacing pace car. Andrew Freenosh did decide to make a trip down to pit road, and I have a feeling that might just be have been reactionary based on where everybody else had been pitting on him before him. But this will put Freenosh now at the tail end of the field, which no doubt is the exact opposite where that 88 car wants to find himself, so it'll be a tough run for Freenosh if he wants to find himself uh, up at the head of the field. Lights are out this time by. We will go back green flag racing pretty much exactly at halfway. Yeah, it, it, I I think with the top three staying out here, not a bad move. Obviously, we saw Andrew Freenosh stay out as well. You know, he's he came down instead. Uh, we'll take it, start at the back of the field. Hey, no harm, no foul, a little bit extra gas. He could be pulling the reverse Dale Jr. where all he needs is a cup to cross the finish line and not let Kevin Harvick steal Junior Nation's hope away. On the back straightaway, it will be the first time we hit double digits or triple digits. We've hit double digits a long time ago, but the first time we hit triple digits, we'll find ourselves right on the first lap of this upcoming restart here. So it's gonna be Kamer, Stanford, King, Burke, Phillip, and Yeto for the top three rows as they are now doubled up, ready to go back racing for more action from America's home for motorsports. Most prominent uh, complex out of all of the different facilities you've got around the, I guess you could say the immediate area. Pace cars down and in. Kyle Kamer now going to lead us to the green flag for the first time all night long. We'll see what the number eight SK Sim Racing Machine can do up in front. We're green flag racing once again. What a start. What a start. I, that was not expected. I thought we would see some wheel spin there. And you have to think, with Eric Stanford, uh, not too long ago, lap 53-ish, uh, he made contact with some stuff. And, oh, he's big loose. Big, big loose there. He came down for 18 seconds. Uh, he was on pit lane or uh, almost a minute. Oh, trouble! Change. Trouble behind them. One car wrecking into the wall in turn number three, and that's going to be the big one. Caution is out. Oh, that's Ryan's a bad... involved. There's at least eight cars collected in this one. 
Oh no. I th think that triggered off the front bumper of somebody. I, I saw it and I lost the number. That was the biggest wreck we've had so far all night long, and that took place all the way back in turns numbers three and four. Big one at Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's a pretty easy thing to happen. This is one of the narrowest mile and a half that you can actually get, especially in the corners on the iRacing service, and sure enough, looks like this is exactly where this started out. And Oh, it was 38 car getting into Agnell Phillips, sending him around. There goes LaRaya, got tipped by Ross Cato. He went into the outside wall, and everybody else just slammed into each other, just trying to avoid it. You want to hear what's funny? Is I don't think that Phillip even got much damage. I, I was going to say dancing, but I didn't want to put the curse on him and, and blame him for something he might not have done. That just looks like, uh, honestly, I, I know this is a no-no word, that was net code. Uh, that was absolute. And Philip didn't get any damage there. Pinched it up against the wall. Uh, didn't touch nothing. <laughs> yeah, that was that. That was the no-no word. I want to get a look on board with Philip if we can and all that because not only did he save the car at the start of the wreck, but then I never thought I'd say this. He then managed to get himself into a wreck avoidance of the exact same wreck immediately after, despite being the one to start the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what was crazy is, is literally you thought, oh, Phillip's going around. Nope, he saved it. Okay, everybody else is going around. Phillip's going to definitely be in it. Nope, <laughs> held it up against the wall. <laughs> it missed everybody else around him. Missed the chaos. Look at him. Oh, he was already out of control at a turn three. No wonder the 38 car came flying up on him so quickly. Oh, look, slitter, wow. slid it. Oh. Insert so drift mode here. Uh, you just you just sit there, man. You just play with the throttle. That's all you do. That's all you can do at that moment. The moment you start getting sideways, that was a drift moment. Uh, somebody clipped this. We need to send this to Iris, and that is how you. That's how you wreck, but not wreck. <laughs> like you just let everybody else wreck around you, and you just figure out how to get through it. <laughs> Well, now that we're under caution and past halfway, why don't we go through the field top to bottom for your SK Sim Racing midway race break under this yellow flag. Kyle Kamer still with the race lead. You've got Eric, uh, sorry, you've got Kevin King down in second place. It's Eric Stanford in third. Bradley Bork, uh, Burke sits in fourth place. You've got Sam Bieto down in fifth. Connor Horn is in sixth. From there, it's Matt Danson in seventh with Sorry, Grant Davison seventh, Matt Danson is eighth, Cody Harris is in ninth, and Agnell Phillip rounds out the top ten. Thomas George starting off right there in eleventh with Jaron Winemaster in twelfth. Nick Silver has rebounded perfectly up to the thirteenth position with Tim Johnson, Michael Johnson, Jeremy Miller, Shane Ewan, Rhett McBride, Andrew Freenodge, and Brandon Bowie rounds out your top twenty. And from there, you're going to have the likes of Brandon Six now in 21st place. Sean Casto is 22nd. Schmidt is 23rd. You've got uh, the likes of Ross Cato in 24th. Tom Wetmore is, I believe, going to be 25th. Sorry, no, uh, David Cobb will be 25th place. And but there you got Michael Arai in 26th. Tom Wetmore is the first driver who will lap down in 27th. Brian Chambliss is 28th. Sean Kalist and Tom Murano are 29th and 30th, both of them two laps down the Murano going to be more as he's out of the car. Thomas uh, Joseph Diaz in 31st, Daniel Eberhard in 32nd, Chris Edwards, Brandon Whitaker, Mike Kosinski, and Nicholas Mara rounds out your 36 car field and from 31st on down there are multiple laps down and some of them are out of this event Nolan but good. <laughs> Good gracious, I still can't get over the fact that it, <laughs> that Philip saved that car. SK Sim Racing is an iRacing team and a channel with an emphasis on reaching those who are new to the oval sim racing world. You can find them online at facebook.com slash SK Sim Racing and on Twitter at SK Sim Racing 1. Race for Champions Race at SK Sim Gear. Com. And don't forget as well to check out the Life as a or Life of a Sim Racer podcast hosted by Brandon Bowie as he recaps his adventures from RSR competition. And no doubt it's going to be a very interesting 
that podcast for him here tonight if he gets too much more excitement so far throughout the course of this race. That was a look top to bottom through the field and your SK Sim Racing midway race break as we get set to go back green flag racing from Charlotte. I hope his first topic on the show uh, is how he made that save. How in the world is that car of Agnum Phillip, uh, that 94, not on the back of a wrecker coming down to pit lane? Uh, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still catching my breath at the fact that that car ain't wrecked. But hey, pace car's off, man. We get to watch more racing. Very, very early launch there from Kyle Kamer. Caught the entire field napping. Kevin King tucks in line for second place. They're still side by side for third and fourth. But Eric Stanford already started to lose ground as Bradley Burke tries to push around the outside lane to take third. They're going to get third and fourth easily over the 19. He'll get a run to the back straightaway, but he's got a challenge here. That's Matt dancing to the outside. Big run for the 38. 19's a little off the pace, not showing what he had earlier, but Kyle Kamer, he's got Kevin King. He's got a big mirror full of the 31, and that's not Robbie Gordon. That's Kevin King instead, and, and here comes Burt and Horn. They're all tracking the leader down, and new leader on the board, 31. So Kyle Camber loses set, uh, first place, about to lose second as well as Connor Horn gives a bit of a touch to the back end of Bradley Burke, trying to give him that little bit of an extra boost into turn number three. Kevin King will officially lead the way and lead his first laps of the race as well. Out of turn number four as he takes lap 106. Bradley Burke sits second place. Connor Horn is still battled out with Camber for third, but it looks like he'll be able to take that without further incident. And I think this is where we start to see Kyle Camber really drop off the pace. Oh, absolutely. Once you start getting dirty air with old tires, that's when you start falling back real quick. And you see here with the 94, he's following the 38 of, of dancing through the field. Uh, but if we're playing race spot bingo for a second, if you were to tell me that Kevin King would be holding this lead uh, past the halfway point, and that Connor Horn would have jumped up from 14th to third, and you'd have the likes of Brandon Six and 19th, Rhett McBride in 21st, and Andrew Freenage in 22nd, I think you would have been lying on your bingo card. And I think now we're gonna see the field starting to settle down a little bit more. That's typically how races at Charlotte work, right? You can get these long green flag runs, but then one caution comes along and everybody goes a little bit crazy getting the chance to actually battle back now on proper fresh tires and everybody else. You're going to get a couple of cautions in quick succession, but this latest restart probably seems to be taking a little bit easier. Now, granted, that is because a good portion of them now do have a fair bit of damage due to all the various incidents that have been taking place over the course of the last 30 laps, give or take. You can see, still see the likes of Grant Davis in that 24 car trying to fight with Kyle Kamer and Jaron Wymaster. Managing the gap between both of them. Yeah, and we just saw the graphic get pulled up there of what makes were up front. There's a lot of Chevys on my board. Uh, Sam Nieto being the first Ford there in the sixth place position, and then it's a lockout of Chevrolets of the top ten. Uh, other than Kyle Kamer, who's uh, fighting with Nick Silver right here, Silver's going to get the pass, and obviously Kamer's going to move back a position. Uh, and then he's got the 39 of Michael Johnson. He's coming up. We talked about that as well, that, that this is really when we would see Kyle Kamer have a bit of an issue, get hung out on the outside line. You're going to be side by side on old tires against new tires. You're not really going to hold a chance. You needed another caution to come out or a couple cautions to be a string. Uh, to maybe flip it and say, hey, I can come pit. No harm, no foul. Who cares? Everybody else is coming with me. But didn't happen. So now he's going to have to be on damage control because he's fallen back. If he stays in 13th, his track position, now it's net loss from here because right now he's evened out as here comes the battle for, for 12th. George is going to get it by a landslide. Just cleared him. Now he's just going to be losing spots from here, what he thought he gained. Brandon Six immediately wanted to pounce on Kyle Kamer as the eight car was way up and out of the groove. And 
The alive from the Sim Racing 66 Chevrolet is going to push to the inside line and he will clear Kyle Kamer. That was the pass for 14th place. Jeremy Miller, all star winner one week ago, wants to make it 15 as well, but Miller's not able to go on the attack because Shane Ewing beat him to the punch. And now all of a sudden Miller finds himself on defense. Yeah, this is this is a tough portion of the race because you're you're a little bit past halfway, but you're not a whole lot past halfway. You, you don't really have the opportunity to say it's go time, but track starting to cool down. Tippers are starting to get hotter. So, I mean, we had the track in full sunshine. Now a quarter of the tracks in, in the in the shade, a quarter of the track is in the heat and a quarter of the track is under cloud cover. So you have a whole lot of different parts of this racetrack. You see it starting to shade down here, coming out of the exit of three and four. Front straightaway, half of it's covered in sun, half of it's covered in clouds. Or the, the grandstands going into one. It's all totally shaded here until you get to the exit. You gotta battle a whole lot of different parts of this track because one part you could be tight, the next part you could be loose in the back straightaway. You, you're gonna figure out one way or another if you're loose off of two, you're probably gonna be wrecking down this thing. Jeremy Miller going to manage to fend off Tim Johnson and stop the bleeding for now. He has fallen all the way back to 18th place. So he'll try to work his way back up to the field, but already look at the USAA Chevrolet and now on the outside line. Decided, well, if I can't get through on the inside, I'll take it on the outside as the Toyota Camry going to pull clear of Jeremy Miller's. ZL1. So Tim Johnston now up to 18. And I can, you can already tell by the line, he's already trying to set up William Schmidt. Yeah, and you have to set them up uh, early as possible. You don't want to set them up too late because that's when you begin to overdrive the corner. Uh, you see that Camber's kind of holding him up a little bit. So, you know, you look at it here. Schmidt wants to make the run happen. He wants to make the pass happen, but he also didn't want to put himself in a vulnerable position. If he sails it in there on a car on older tires, they could get loose. They could get really, really tight. As I, oh, the eight pushed up there, and it allowed Schmidt to get to the bottom side of him. Now they're two by two, and what does the Toyota do? Is he going to the outside? He's going to try. Uh, he's going to follow the eight and try to split him down the middle. Tim Johnston side by side, drag race it out with Kyle Kamer down the back straightaway. William Schmidt still managing his tires, managing the gap. He's going to have to pick his battle here. Does he really want to waste time fighting with Tim Johnston? Does he want to try to hold him off and, or even just let him through and try to save some tires a little bit as David Cobb gets past Kyle Kamer as well? That was for 18th place. So now even Kyle Kamer starting to fall back a couple of spots as David Cobb. We haven't talked about the Sim Cube. Toyota Camry so far all day long. He's trying to work his way a bit further up through the field after he started down at 24th. Johnson outside. Schmidt on the inside. I think Johnson's got this one. Yeah, Johnson got it this time. He, he finally got to the outside of that machine there and it allowed him to make a, a better pass and a better entry into turns three and four. Got him down the back straightaway there, or the front straightaway, sorry. Got him in one and two. At three and four, set the pass up. Got the run down the front straightaway. Got into one and two and made it happen. You take a look here at the 34 machine of Brandon Bowie. He's the next one on his list if he can get around him. A lot of these drivers here are in this pack of no man's land. You're not up front. You're about six seconds back you got to make something happen you got to make it happen now we're coming to, we're under 80 laps to go Nolan it's go time you have one more pit stop to make theoretically uh, one more pit stop that you're going to do can Agnel Phillip you know recover from the pit road issue he had at Dover uh, Kevin King's gone he's seven tenths of a second ahead of Burt you know who's going to win the race within the race on pit lane Pit stops can make or break a race, but at Charlotte, that is even more true because of how difficult of a pit road it is to get on and off. You can lose whole seconds sometimes just entering pit road or even more so exiting pit road as you've seen in the past with drivers even spinning out of pit road. 
even had one driver earlier today lose it on the bump out of pit road and actually put the inside wall in the process. But there was no cost for that. That was even before our first yellow flag on the night during our first ever run of green flight pit stops throughout the course of this race. So you know that you're going to have a lot of drivers that are going to be really trying to nail pit road. But as fatigue sets him more and more, which is going to be, I would almost say, double due to the extent of the delay some of these drivers had to go through while all the technical issues before this race were sorted out. I think the, the probability for mistakes has gone up substantially from the last time we had green flight pit stops. Absolutely. And then you also have to put into uh, take into account that the track's different. You know, you're racing harder than what you were racing in that first stint because obviously the track was slippery. It, it, you didn't really have much of an opportunity to make passes because the back end wanted to go as, you know what, uh, you, you know, we're going to take it three wide as George goes to the bottom of all of them. And this could get hairy because he's not been very good on the bottom. He pushes up there, but he gets a run off the exit. Him and Brandon Six both get a good run off the exit, and it allowed Johnson to, to catch the toe of the 66 there for a little bit, but the six is still persistent. He's on the bottom, and it's a battle of Fords. Boom. Big twitch there. Thomas George trying to now pinch David Kolb up to the outside wall as they enter turn three, and Michael Johnson tried to cover him off, wasn't able to get it down there. Tied, though. George found the bottom first of the Sirius XM Mustang. Pushed his way up through the field. So Michael Johnson now I think is going to have to play defense. He's trying to now pinch George down, which is always a risky business this late in a run when it is so easy for the car inside to get tight, wash up, and take you out. Yeah, these two are going to be fighting like crazy here for this Ooh. position. This, this is getting hairy because now you've got the 11 of Cobb. He's back there. I'm not going to say he's impatient, but he's impatient. Oh! Oh, he saved it. He's in the grass. What a save. What a Five, save. Four, make it five, but what a save for Thomas George. He really pinched Michael Johnson up and turn three. Johnson decided to give him a taste of his own medicine and pinched him down. He was not moving. George drifted up into him. A great save, though. Hopped across the Legends Oval. Best part for Michael Johnson, though, he didn't even scratch the paint on the outside wall, so he didn't lose a second of time despite now battling with David Cobb. Here's a look at the replay on board with Thomas George with the inside line. Push it up, push it up, and that is some cat-like reflexes to work that wheel to keep that thing pointed in the right direction. <laughs> he thought we were at the Charlotte Roval. He wanted to go down there and take that, take that little inside shortcut there. But uh, 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 not going to happen. David Cobb, he makes the pass on Johnson. He's going to get up to the 12th place position. And now you have a battle between the 39 and the 56. Is, wow, that was a big cutoff right there. <laughs> that Mustang cut the nose of the Toyota. This 4-5 car battle here, Nolan, has been consistently the best battle on the racetrack because these drivers are throwing it out of the line. You want to finish. You want to be in the top 10 here just in case a caution does come out in this late race portion because, well, one, it lines people back up with Kevin King, uh, who's 1.4 seconds ahead of the field, and chaos could ensue in turn one. You never know what's going to happen. You, you want to be further enough back to where, well, you don't just tear it all up. This is crazy racing, and the 28's right there looking all of it in his windshield, or his mirror. Saw Cody Harris push up out of turn two. He will get clear of Brandon Six, and will hold on to his 10th place for now. Calm still on the inside of Brandon Six as the 66 continues to try to hold Call down on the inside line. This is one of those battles that will rage on for several more laps, I imagine. Yeah, they've already been side by side for about three laps straight. And Cody Harris not helping things up the road. As soon as one of them gets a run, Cody Harris has come up to block it, essentially forcing them to remain side by side each other and burn each other's tires up. Smart. Super smart. Pulling the Michael Waltrip. Uh, controlling both lines, man. That's what DEI used to do back in the day. Teresa, don't sue me. 
Uh, those, those two have been able to do it. Now that time, Cobb pushed six all the way up against the wall. We could have seen another issue there with what we saw with the six, but he's controlling both lanes, and that time Whoa. he's not going to do it because Cobb sends it. He sent it, and he made it stick. Cobb made it stick, and it's three wide. Cobb was done waiting. He said, all right, I want that top 10. He took it to the inside. They almost went four wide. Down the back straight away. Cody Harris tried to cover. Cobb wasn't having it. I think Harris bounced off of both lines. There's still three wide. And just now, double it out again out of turn number four. As Brandon six pulls clear, Michael Johnson now has to battle with Cody Harris for 12th place. And I think Harris will be able to tuck in line here for that 13th position now and you can already tell David Cobb is starting to pull away he's got a substantial gap over Brandon Six but it is for all intents and purposes still about an eight nine car pack right in the middle here between uh, from about 10th place all the way back to 18th yeah and I'm sure when they got single file everybody came over the radio and said all right chill out <laughs> like just chill <laughs> there's no sense we're 134 laps into this and they're still putting on a hell of a show like that's what's crazy we were 134 laps in and you just went three wide and if the 39 uh <laughs> if the 39 wanted to get crazier with Michael Johnson we would have sent it four wide going into turns one and two uh, and that was a recipe for a disaster the six is rebounding his way back up uh, just a little while ago I saw him well back and now he's working back up here to the 20th place position but it's still a battle it, it, the battles are everywhere the 56 has made his way around the 28 here Johnson's coming six is coming Cobb is fast that 11 car is fast These drivers showing no sign of backing down anytime soon. Kyle Kamer to the inside of Harris. They touch once, twice. Harris up the hill. He manages to hang on, but it is starting to get physical out there on the racetrack. Harris is going to lose several spots. As Kyle Kamer will now move his way up in the 14th. That puts him into 15th. And likewise for George and Schmidt are both going to move up one spot as well. Hey, at this point, a lot of drivers were about done being held up by Cody Harris. They saw David Call make a bold move, and they decided to, well, follow the monkey, I guess, shall we say. Yeah, and cue Olivia Newton-John with let's get physical, physical, uh, because every single one of these drivers are putting it on the line. You saw Johnson's, you know, driver's side door beat to mess i mean just tore up like somebody at a, a high school football game took a sledgehammer to it and just tore it up but you're still continuously seeing guys like johnson uh and johnson uh or john stun and johnson not the baby powder or the the, the weird baby soap stuff that burns your eyes those two have been going at it like crazy all race long and, and Brandon Six just gets to watch it. And, well, by the way, uh, you remember when, when Camer stayed out on, on old tires? Well, he's going to work his way back through the field again. Tim Johnson on the bottom. Camer on top in front of them. Michael Johnson, Brandon Six also still going side by side. Sun is continuing to dip down towards the horizon. It just passed 8 o'clock p.m. in sim time. And... The sun is hanging low over turns three and four for the time being. It'll be 60 laps to go next time by the line. It is 61 to go as of right now. When, well, that means green flag pit stops are not far off. You saw a lot of the guys on that first stint. They were able to go at least 60 laps. Then the first caution came out. So at this point, you pit now and take a full tank. You are guaranteed safe to the end on fuel. So I imagine we're going to see a couple of drivers coming on down to the lane before long here. Brandon Bowie just came down. That was pretty smart. Right on the money, like you said. Uh, and, and Alex Heath out there in the chat said, David Cobb Jr. is one of the best in the business. I agree. Uh, up 14 spots, started 24th, has consistently worked his way to the top 10. And he stayed right in this top 10 battle 
lapped all race long, and so far, if you look at the speeds, he's not far off of what the leaders are running. Give that man a, a set of sticker tires and bring a caution out. He's coming to the front. He doesn't have the, the, the 10 lap speed that we've seen out of Kevin King or, or Bird or Phillip or Horn for that matter. Your top four has been just bad fast. But the 11 has long run speed, and that's what's really set him up for success here because, well, we're on the second longest green flag run of the night. So a lot of these drivers battling back here have just tore their tires to shreds as you continuously watch George track down Johnson here. And then there's Ewan working his way up through the field as oh, big slide off of two. I mentioned David Cobb had some excellent long run pace, but if he wants to put himself into race winning contention, I think he is going to still need himself a caution to come his way. He is well about 11 seconds back, or sorry, about 10 seconds back, about 9.6 at the moment. So that's not enough to reel in by the end of the race, even if he's got a good strategy, unless he really pulls out something out of the hat that nobody else is really, I guess you could say, anticipating. But I, I think. That even with then, it'd be a long shot. The best thing that could come his way right now would be a yellow flag. Yeah, everybody's going to be on the same footing then. I doubt everybody would have come down for four tires and fuel, but I think it'd be better than trying to run down a, a 10 second gap from 10th place. No, I agree. And I, I think what a lot of these drivers are hoping for, not Brandon Bowie, he doesn't want to see a yellow. He wants to see this cycle through because he was the first car. Uh, that decided to come down for four fresh tires. But, you know, once we cycle through green fly pit stops, there's at least two sets in the pits. So, you, you know, a lot of these drivers haven't really taken all of them just yet. So you're going to come take tires regardless. And obviously with 20 to go, you're going to put four freshmen on it and go make a, a late charge if you can up through the front. But Bob's well, starting to catch... Davis and Davis is slowly reeling in Silver who has rebounded flawlessly up to the eighth place position along with Winemaster who almost got collected in the big one here uh, at Charlotte. A lot of drivers up and down this board. If you would have told me starting this race, this would be our top 10. I'd have been like, no way. There's, there's no way this is our top 10 as well. There's Cobb now. Uh, he's coming down pit lane. So David Cobb. Coming on in, in his uh, Sim Cube number 11 Toyota Camry. Looking up to the likes of Matt Danson, Agnell, Philip, Connor, Horner, Bradley Burke, second through fifth. Matt Danson's got the long run pace as well. Looks at the inside of Agnell, Philip will make that attempt for a pass and will actually complete the pass in turn one. That was for fourth place. Kyle Kamer just made his trip down the pit road as well. We'll stick with the battle up here in front as one by one. Drivers now start to filter down and in. Now the guys that come in sooner have the upper hand. They're having a brief window where they're going to be faster on tires. But once these other guys in the lead have also come on down and in, then it's going to be a bit of a question mark because all of a sudden they're going to be on older tires for the rest of the run, which means their tires will fall off sooner, which means overall for the longer run. The guys that are pitting later will be faster for longer, but it won't be as drastic as it is you know, going up against somebody on 60 lap old tires. Yeah, and remember what happened last time. You know, the, the, the longer you stay out, the better your odds are for a caution, because if you think about this uh, in a strategic way, you want to race this race backwards. You, Like I said, you want to start at lap 200 and say, okay, where do I want to position myself for lap 190? But because that 10 lap sprint to the finish, you have that opportunity to go, okay, am I in position to make a charge for the lead? Am I in a position to make a charge for the win? And so that was a big block by the 28 of, of Harris. That touched the wall, comes in front, and that could have been our yellow. And that really could have shaken a lot of things up here this afternoon. But you, you race it backwards like a road course. You know, if you, if you think there uh, at that mark of what you can do, Obviously, what we saw, uh, Michael Johnson down pit lane, Ewing came down. Uh, came down pit lane there. If you go, oh, man, if I race it like that, I have an opportunity to flip track position if a caution comes out. And now you see Rhett McBride. He's on pit lane as well. There's a lot of people back there further on in the field that are, are starting to try to flip it. 
who's going to be the first domino in the first seven, I would say. And it's Connor Horn. He's the first one to flip it. 50 laps left to go in this race. Connor Horn has made his trip down and into pit road. And he's not the only one. Jeremy Miller making the trip down into the lane as well. So a lot of drivers now starting to make their trips into pit road. And well, Jeremy Miller pitted from 16th place. He's going to be leaving a lot further down the line, though, speeding on the entry, locked it up. And that's going to be a really tough break for Jeremy Miller. He's going to have to hold for a while. That's tough. Uh, mistakes at the end. Uh, you have to stay focused all the way through this race. Obviously, there was a bit of a delay. We were about an, an hour past when we were supposed to start. Track got wet. We couldn't do nothing about it, right? It happens. So, obviously, they were sitting around. They ran a lot of practice. There was a lot of time to go out here and figure out what you were going to do. Well, this wasn't a part of your plan because now you have to pray for other people's misfortune to get yourself into the front, get yourself back in contention, contention for at least a top 10. You know, you have Kevin King, who's out here on a, a three-second tear over Danson and Phillip and George and Davis. And, and you don't really know because now Winemaster's on pit lane of who's going to be the first domino to come down in that first five right here. Because if you come down early enough, if you're dancing or Phillip, you have a potential a potential race-winning strategy to flip it. And it's Agnel Phillip that comes down. He was four seconds off of Kevin King. That could be the race-winning move if we stay green here. Lights have just clicked on over the Charlotte Motor Speedway, and now you can see the lights starting to be reflected off of a lot of the machines out there on the racetrack. That's a bit tight with David Cobb on the exit of the turn two, and he is going to get around the likes of Brandon Six and William Schmidt, who are still battling it out for currently sixth place on the racetrack, and they are not showing signs of coming down just yet. They're going to remain out there for another lap. So this is the first battle for a spot outside of the top five and there you can see the lights on the grandstands flicked on over the beautiful Charlotte Motor Speedway America's home for motorsports tell you what it, it amazed me when I actually realized how many facilities you've got uh, all around the Charlotte Motor Speedway right you've got the speedway itself which has the oval the legends oval the road course the legends road course and so on and so forth you've got the Z-Max four lane dragway right next door quite literally and right next door to that the dirt track at Charlotte it's got pretty lit much literally every type of racing under the sun that you can think of around here. Well, they don't call it America's home for motorsports for a reason. Obviously, uh, Daytona uh, has just about, as the leader comes down pit lane, Matt Danson uh, takes over there. But you talked about it. Road courses, dirt racing, you know, quarter midgets, whatever you want to throw at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in this surrounding area, which is why the all-star race was ran here for so many years, because you got people who go race that dirt race on a Friday, Saturday night, and then they go they go race the road course the next day. IMSA comes to run here. IndyCar uh, w should come around here. I would say put them on the Roval. Let's see what that would look like. I think it would be an interesting show. Or put them on the Oval, for heaven's sakes. I, I, I love that the, the hub of motorsports is right here in Charlotte because not even four blocks away, the NASCAR Hall of Fame is right there in North Carolina uh, is home of the greatest driver to ever live, Dale Earnhardt. And of course, they don't have this nowadays, but way back when, the Global Rallycross Championship even ran a rallycross round uh, here at the Charlotte Motor Speed, where they utilized the good portion of that front stretch and the Legends Oval. Now, IRC doesn't have that exact rallycross course, but they do have a fictional one that was made up for the Speedway. And it's a pretty good one at that. And it utilizes actually a good chunk of the infield road course as well. So even in iRacing, there's a good bunch of races that you can find around the Charlotte Motor Speedway. You saw Kevin King pit a little while ago. A lot of drivers have been making their pit stops over the last several laps or so. And you saw Agnel Phillip leave pit road and he's now back out on the racetrack. At the moment, you've got 10 cars still on the lead lap. Those are 10 of the drivers that I believe have, are yet to pit, but more specifically, Matt Dancer is still yet to come in. We know that much. I think Grant Davis has yet to stop as well. Let's see if I can't figure out 
who else has yet to come on down and into Bay Road uh, most lately. But yeah, it looks like everybody within the top eight so far for sure is yet to come in. And in fact, you can extend that pretty far down to all the way to ninth place. And then Connor Horn is the first driver that is out of pit road on fresh tires. I was just about to ask what happened to Agnel Phillip, and we're looking at it there, caught the Whoa. wall, decided to go rally cross racing like we were just talking about. Came in, took his optional repair. That was seven, uh, seven seconds of optional repair, uh, roughly. That's tough because he was one of the faster cars on the track as Matt Danson uh, still holds the lead. He's obviously going to get freight trained here by the fresh tires, but this is a good strategy for him. Davis, George, Six, uh, and, and the drivers in the top ten right here because guess what? Caution comes out, you flip it. We saw Burke do it earlier. Uh, we saw Brandon Six and Matt Danson make this strategy happen. When these fresh tires catch the old tires, the cars, for some reason, uh, on the older tires, begin to get a little bit more aero. They, they begin to feel a little bit more because the back end wants to step out when that car gets to the outside blowing by you about 10 miles per hour faster, uh, and it makes it more unbearable to drive here. So don't, don't look now. With 163 on the board, these drivers coming through the field like Kevin King, he's going to make a very bold move to the bottom. This, this could bring out the yellow. You saw just how off throttle Matt Danson was that time by just to make the corners to comparison to Kevin King, who while he was off throttle a little bit at the start, was able to get on the accelerator much, much earlier. And even Red McBride was checked up big time. And that's why he in fact lost a bit of time to dance it down the front straightaway because he was checked up so much on corner exit the loss of it and that straight line speed that it would have otherwise had had he been able to carry a lot of that momentum around. So ninth place on up. And, well I guess eighth place on up plus Harris have you have to pin and sure enough Cody Harris just pit this time by. Matt Dance is coming in. That's been hot there into the lane locks it up but is able to get in. Don't think he got bought for speeding which it looks like he has not. So Matt Danson escapes the wrath of the I, of the uh, radar gun down there on pit road and more drivers pitting at this time including Ross Cato. Yeah, but let's see if he if he caught past the eye of uh, of, of our wonderful race control. Uh, not going to mention any names, but he is the goat. Uh, in my opinion, the goat dancing still on pit lane here. I'm surprised. <laughs> oh, oh my! Caution. Oh, I just was about to say it. Where's the caution? And it's Michael Johnson. Oh my gosh! Oh, and guess who's still in the lead lap? Matt Danson. Wow. So not only is he going to be on the lead lap, but now he's going to be on fresh tires. Not in the lead, mind you. But I believe it's mentioned still on the lead lap. Michael Johnson finally gets rolling. He was actually stopped there for a long, long time. Almost a lap, as a matter of fact. And I, I'm pretty sure we might not be able to get a replay of this one. Uh, but I can tell you right now, he definitely spun it somewhere and ended up kind of beached on the apron. Oh, my goodness. That, uh, that, that just threw a big old wrench. And by the way, <laughs> you remember how I said that the top 10 that has decided at one point in time hey, I'm going to stay out? Well, well, well. Uh, looky here. There they still sit. Freenage back in the race. Brandon Six back in this race. Nick Silver, uh, who, who has had to overcome some issues in the first portion of this race. There he finds himself. And now David Cobb, who does not have to pit, along with Jaron Winemaster and Sam Nieto, well, they find themselves one, two, three, with Danson in fourth. And oh, yeah, by the way, fresh tires on the 38. So it doesn't really matter uh, who's behind him that has taken tires because first car on freshies, P4. Uh, and that was our fast guy uh, from the from the last green flag run we've had. So I believe the way things are looking for the time being, the top 15 
are all going to be up there with the rest of the field. They are going to be on the lead lap, right? You've got a good chunk of drivers elsewhere, including Shane Ewing, 16th through 24th place. They're also on the lead lap, but they were a lap down, and the race leaders had come on down into pit road. So that is why they are going to be finding themselves uh, now a little bit further down. They're going to have to get weighted on the pace card. They'll be lining it up single file at the rear of the field. And in fact, I don't think all of them will be able to get the chance to go all the way around. Well, maybe they might be able to get the chance. I think it looks like they might have just managed to get around it. That Sam Vieto had stayed out. I thought that might trap a couple of them down, but it looks like they won't be able to, or they will be able to get their laps back. So Sam Vieto will be your new race leader, and he'll be taking us on the green flag for the first time tonight. This, this is going to get very interesting because we're going to come down to about 30 to go. Uh, so we're starting to creep to see the end. I told you we'd be here till midnight or a little bit past Eastern Standard Time. Uh, 11.54 over here. Our poor producer, Hugo. Uh, we love you. Uh, we love you big. You, you're doing great things. Uh, this is where it gets interesting. Because not only do you see David Cobb, who's been very fast uh, on a longer run, has a bit of a bit of strain on his tires came down lap 145 we're now at 168 we'll take the green flag at about 170 so him being on about 30 lap old tires uh rough give or take my math isn't that good alabama education everybody uh 151 153 for winemaster and nieto it's not going to make a whole lot of difference but I, I think this is going to jumble up this restart here. Uh, there's going to be a lot of checking up that's going to happen in this field. And Charlotte's known for it. Unless Nieto just takes off like the guy in the cannon yesterday in the all-star race, I, I think we're stacking this field up and somebody's getting turned. There will be... From the looks of things, 31 laps left to go in a 200-lap race. When we come back to green flag racing, the life of a sim racer 300 has just been kicked into overdrive. While we're under this caution period, want to give one more shout out as well to SK Sim Racing, sponsoring the SK Sim Racing leading board. They're an iRacing team and channel with an emphasis on reaching those who are new to the oval sim racing world. You can find them online at facebook.com slash SK Sim Racing and on Twitter at SK Sim Racing 1. Race what champions race at skcingear.com. So San Diego will be in the race lead. Winemaster in second, called third, Dance in fourth, sixth, fifth, Davis in sixth. Quite a few drivers that have been up in front all day long, but have not had the chance to leave the race. So San Diego could find himself under very, very heavy fire. So we get set to go back to green flag racing. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm at a loss for words with how some of these drivers were able to, A, know that this was going to happen, but Nieto's going to have to go in that beautiful scheme. San Vieto takes it to the green flag. Weimester immediately chops across the nose of David Cobb. Does not want to give the SimQ Camry any opportunity to make a move up the inside. Matt Danson, though, with a clean track on the outside groove. He's going to make the attack on David Cobb and move around for third place. While Weimester now continues to look up to San Vieto, but I think Matt Danson's going to have a say or two, and he might want to see what Weimarsa's defensive game looks like in a minute. Yeah, and what he better hope not has happened is that Brandon Six doesn't get clear of this 11 uh, rather quickly. You want to see a battle behind you. That's that's going to be the biggest key as we come down to 29 to go, and the battle didn't happen for long. So I would say that if you're circling a driver right now, if we go caution-free, it would be the 66 of Brandon Six would be the guy I would say have it because Winemasters caught the back bumper of Nieto and right on his tail, hot on his heels, is that 38 of Danson and hot on his heels is the 66. Oh gosh, let's just, let's throw a wrench into it and let's line them back up with 10 to go. 
Less than 30 laps remaining. Grant Davis pulling the outside away from David Cole. We've got Andrew Freenach at the back as well. This is the fight for the lead, though. San Nieto trying to fend off Danson, Weimesser, and Brandon Six. Danson's got the run. Going for the race lead on San Nieto. Outside line through turn four. Matt Danson is through. He needs a battle. He needs a battle out of Sam Nieto to hold Brandon Six off to give him some breathing space, and it's not going to happen because Brandon Six, he's right around him. Didn't even get to the center of the corner, and he was already clear for second. This is going to be a race between the 38 and the 66. You also got Davis. He's on four fresh tires as well. Uh, this is going to get crazy because Connor Horn's in the mix, too. He's in the top five. Oh, 38's in the wall. Oh. Six makes the overtake for the race lead as Matt Danson tries to rip that car in two all along the Legends Oval. Brandon Six goes to the race lead. Danson is going to have to fight back again. The entire field is wondering how the heck Danson oh. can recover this one. He didn't hit the outside wall with that one. It looked like he smacked the wall from my vantage point, but no, it just got really loose coming off of four. And what a save. I, I, another incredible save in this race. These drivers are really handling these cars well. Uh, here comes Connor Horn. He's to the bottom. He's all over the back bumper of the 38. Slides up in front of the 24 of Grant Davis. Gets a run down the back straightaway, and it's single file for your top five. Battle for six is happening between King uh, and Burt. There's racing everywhere. Well, what else would you expect when it gets down to the final quarter of a 200 lap race and a caution comes out? I would be concerned if these guys didn't start to race a little bit more all out than they were earlier on. Yeah, I would be shocked. And, and, and right now you got Connor Horn. He's trying to make a pass happen now. You have to go. The top three are breaking away as well. Kevin King wants to take it three wide there for a second. Danson's still there in P2. Uh, he holds off the, the 67 of Connor Horn. Making a mistake here is, is crucial not to have one, right? The 38 made the mistake, handed the lead to Brandon Six. It's in that's the wrong person to hand the lead to. That is absolutely the wrong person as we continue to look at the three wide battle down here between Free Nodge, Burke, and Kevin King. They're continuously putting it all on the line as there's contact made. Oh my goodness, what a race! That was the replay on a turn number four as they took the line to hit 24 laps to go. They're not three wide anymore, but they were certainly trying for it. Here's the fight for second place. Connor Horn getting by Matt Danson. Well, they might have used up all of his stuff a little bit earlier on. He's going to try to cut in low, though, and go for the over-under on Connor Horn and his Bernie, Bernie Lydex number 67 Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. Matt Danson still pressuring, though. He wants to get that second place back and just in behind. This is Kevin King and Bradley Burke. Once again, duking it out, and I do believe that might have been. Well, this is actually live, just a little bit further down the road. That's the fight for fifth place. As Kevin King going to make something happen on Bradley Burke? Will he get it complete? I think this time he will. Yeah, that boosted machine is hooked up. It's bad fast when the sun goes down. Uh, the racing's getting very hot here because now you got Connor Horn in P number two, and we we all saw the Twitter, uh, the the funny savage response uh, from Evan P, the goat Evan P, uh, and it said, you know, you, you would have a different spelling of your name if, if somebody went to school. Well, Connor Horn could punch his ticket after 200 laps around the Charlotte Motor Speedway into the playoffs. All he's got to do is pass the guy with the most wins in Brandon Six. He's four tenths of a second back. Matt Danson is, is three tenths of a second back behind him. You know, this battle for the win has now included Grant Davis. Uh, that's all a second uh, from first to fourth is what separates you from a win. And they're coming to 20 to go as you go on board with Danson. He's catching the draft there on Connor Horn, but he can't really make it stick. He's kind of having a he's kind of burp that throttle through the center of the corner there. You see Danson trying everything he can to run down Connor Horn up in front, but it is such a difficult task, and it is not one that he's having a very easy time with. Thomas George, Andrew Friedosh. 
They are running nose to, they're running side by side a little bit further down in the field as well. You've got battles up and down all the way throughout this field. It's almost one of those things where once again, just it seems like it is whenever we get down to the end of one of these races, where do you look, right? Aerial coverage. <laughs> or I go I could blimp cam. Let's just go blimp or drone and just go the rest of the race with it. Because the 31's coming. I, I honestly think we need a caution for Kevin King because he's a second back. You know, you're going to burn your stuff up before you get, obviously, up to Brandon Six because you have to pass some really stout guys. But, and a huge but. I mean, a huge butt as we do take a look at the drone cam. This is uh, SK Sim Racing's drone cam. Look here at the, the 95 machine of Bradley Burke. The get wet, I think that's what it says. Uh, sports? I, I don't know what that is, but it looks cool. It looks like a swimming pool on a car. Less than 20 laps to go. The sun has almost completely set behind the turns three and four grandstands as you ride on board with Bradley Burke as he tries to catch up to Matt Danson. Danson's caught Kevin King. Gives a bit of a bump to the back end of the team Chevrolet. Backs off. Might be trying to set up a run through three and four. Or could have also just opted not to go for the overtake that time by. I think you might think he's got a chance to still go for the race lead, but Brandon Six has been pretty steadily pulling away lap after lap. Yeah, Connor Horn is, is about to be the next victim for that 31 machine. He's putting it on him. I mean, he's he's picking him up, putting him down. He's looking back here with Andrew Freenage in the 56. Uh, that would be Tim Johnson. Those two are battling for the, the ninth and 10th place position, respectively, on the racetrack with William Smith behind him in 11th. Trying to capitalize. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Smith takes it three wide. We're coming close to 10 to go. We thought a race that wasn't going to happen happens, and now look at it. There's racing from top to bottom here. Even the cars that are out of the field. I heard in the back straight away, they're three wide, and they're not even out of here. And Freenosh still trying to fight it out side by side, trying to work that outside line to pull around Tim Johnston. Not going to get there. He's just going to tuck in line, though, in front of William Schmidt right before Schmidt can probably go for an overtake. Kevin King's got Connor Horn as well. There's the fight for second place. Kevin King to the inside. Connor Horn fighting back on the outside. Side by side, down the back straightaway. Kevin King, though, going to try to complete this one in three and four. Connor Horn downshifted in turn four just to get the upper hand on, on the power. And this is exactly what Brandon Six wants to see there for a second. They were gaining on him because it looks like Brandon Six is trying to save some tire, but it didn't really work because now they're side by side. And it doesn't really matter because Brandon Six is able to pull away. He stretched to another tenth of a second on him. It was seven tenths. Now the 67 of Connor Horn is all over the back bumper. The 31 sends him. He sent him into three. And that was the most speed the 31 had carried into the corner all night long. And now, who can he catch him? Can he catch Brandon Six before this race is over? Lap 188 is on the board of 200. It's the pay window and in in, in who's getting into the playoffs. You can't let Brandon Six win this race, Kevin. This is not showing any signs of going away anytime soon. Matt Danson, I think, has lost a bit of speed to Connor Horn. You still see Bradley Bird looking very, very hungry to see if he can't, at the very least, go for a podium. Closer and closer towards the end of this race. I don't think lap traffic is going to end up becoming a factor in the end of this race. So this will end up being a heads up grudge match right down to the checkered flag. You're absolutely right. But Kevin King's losing a little bit here. Uh, three one hundredths of a second is it going to win you this race. You're going to have to dig deep. You're going to have to find a tenth to a tenth and a half. Uh, at least a lap. You're going to have to gain on him somewhere. He's beating you in one and two, but you're beating him in three and four, right? You look here with him. Look at the telemetry when he goes down into one. He slightly had an advantage there coming off the corner, dips it down to under six tenths of a second, but then he gains. Uh, Brandon Six gains on him down the back straightaway. He gets a better run off. 
But coming into three and four, you see it again. He gains on entry. He gains through the center. But off exit of the corners is where he's losing his time. Either his rear end slipping. He can't really get back on the gas all the way through. But he's really diving it into the corners. That's not going to win you. Back it up a little bit. Let's, let's back the corners up. Get a run. Get some momentum. Build it up. Don't let Brandon Six run away with this. Because now it, it's almost a little too late for you here. Bradley Burke looking high. Will he try to get in low to dime it off the corner, get a run and dance it? Yes, he will. Pushes down almost at the apron. Look at the overspeed for the 95 car right to the back of dance. It looks left, looks right, then eventually commits to the left-hand side right at the second dog leg and goes to the inside on Matt Danson, and that will put Bradley Burke up to fourth place. That is how you properly set up a pass and execute, but you gotta get the defense as well, as Matt Danson immediately crosses over to battle back into turn three. Oh, and what a race. The 95 did everything right, back the corner up properly, got back on the gas in the center. They're gonna make contact there. No, they didn't. That was an incredible, powerful move from the 95. Bradley Burke, he is gonna hold it right there for us for just a split second. He's going to go into the corner. He can't hold it. He's against the wall. He's going to get the slingshot run here because he's going to get some draft. Oh, what a race. And now Bradley Berg looking low. Connor Horde now pulling alongside with him. They almost bang doors out of turn number four. Bradley Burke. Pulls the inside. Connor Horn up top. Burke trying to go for a pass, and you just saw Matt Danson trying to do a pass in the grass. That second dog leg didn't work out, but hey, what an effort. Not done yet, though. Still going to be five to go in the line as Burke still side by side with Connor Horn down the back stretch. A for effort for Matt Danson. He tried to pull an Earnhardt. Didn't work for him. But hey, take a look. They're battling here very hard, but the battle for the lead's going to heat up here soon. A tenth of a second will get it if he can do it but look at this four-way battle look at davis look at the 24 he's still sitting here in p6 for flat out motorsports doing a great job a whale of a job i would say here but danson's not quitting he's not letting his team down he's not doing what he what anybody else would do in this situation a lot of drivers would just roll over and go guess what I, I'm good. You two wreck one another, but he's putting it all on the line right here, right now, because the 38's fast. He knew he is. Bradley Burke's faster, but wrong timing, wrong place, wrong time on these moves. He's getting caught up here. Is this big blocks being thrown to the 95's wall ride here? Where did Grant Davis come from? The C design Chevrolet suddenly makes a huge lunge to the inside to catch up to Bradley Burke. They were fighting each other so much, even we didn't notice that Grant Davis was slowly pulling himself into the mix. I think a lot of these guys have come to the realization they are not going to be able to go after a race win today, so they're just wanting to battle it out for the last podium position. I mean, it, hey. Kenny Rogers said it. You got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them and know when to walk away when the dealing's done. The dealing ain't done. You got laps to go. It's 198 of 200. This is crunch time. You got to get every position possible because at the end of the regular season, the end of the championship, you find yourself one point out. You look back at this race and go, I could have fought harder. I could have gotten a position. And they're putting it out here right now. It's Davis. He's up to fifth, and he just cut Brandon Burke off. Two laps left to go. This time by, it'll be the white flag when they come back around, unless there's a late race caution. Apart from these guys, the field is pretty strong out, so I'd be very surprised if we did get this. We've been so focused on the battle for third. The battle for the lead, though, not done by a long shot. White flag is out this time by the top two separated by just two tenths of a second. Connor Horn still trying to fend off Danson and the others behind him, but here's Brandon Six. Kevin King has been running them down further and further. It was almost a tenth quicker last time by. King's got one chance in turn three to make something happen not close enough he goes for the lunge takes a tight entry but it is too little too late brandon six out of turn number four will win the life of a sim racer 300 kevin king can't get there and connor horn will hang on for third
Oh my goodness, that, that, that race right there, another lap. Brandon or Kevin King is winning this race. Fireworks shows going off. I race and you are spectacular. Uh, the real Silver Cup Series, you are phenomenal. 200 laps of non-stop action here at Charlotte. That's an all-star race for you. You don't need a stinking title for it. NASCAR, put the all-star race back in Charlotte and let these boys go race. All cars across the line. Brandon six takes the race win, and I think a very deserving win at that. Kevin King, though, finished that race less than a tenth of a second. If there had been one more lap, who knows what might have happened. But Brandon Six is grateful that is only 200 and not 201 as he burns it down to the front straightaway. We'll go through your SK Sim Racing post-race results from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Brandon Six, a race winner, with Kevin King only nine hundredths of a second behind. Connor Horn is down in third with Matt Danson in fourth. Bradley Burke is in fifth with Grant Davis in sixth. Nick Silver is seventh. Kyle Kamer is eighth. Timothy Johnston is ninth as the first Toyota. And Thomas George will round out the top ten. Andrew Freenage back there battled, beaten, and battered, but he finishes 11th. That is an incredible run for that Ford. William Smith in 12th. Sam Nieto had the strategy play, didn't play out in his favor, finishes 13th. Jaron Widemaster with the save of the race uh, with Agnel Phillip down there in 15th. Ross Cato, David Cobb, uh, Michael Larrar, uh, Sam Cast or Sean Casto, uh, Eric Stanford rounds out your top 20. Brett McBride was 21st place with Shane Ewing, 22nd. Brandon Boo is 23rd. Brian Chambers, 24th. Tom Wetmore was 25th. Cody Harris is 26th. Michael Johnson was 27th. Jimmy Miller, 28th. Sean Kale is 29th. Tom Murata rounds out the top 30. Rounding out the rest of the field here, 100 plus laps down. Joseph Diaz, Daniel Everhart, Chris Edwards, uh, Braden Whitaker, uh, Nick Mara, and Michael. Koncheski round out your 36 car field here this afternoon. What a race for the life of Sim Racer 300 from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. A, a, a truly extraordinary night over the course of this race. And we'll see if we can't uh, get a quick word in with uh, the top three in just a moment. And we'll start things off with race winner, Brandon Six. I tell you what, Brandon, it was looking pretty tight there at the end. You had a good lead, but Kevin King, well, if he had just one lap, I think you would have had a word or two to say with you about that. Yeah, uh, honestly, probably another lap or two if that was going to be Kevin's race to win. And honestly, it probably would have been his to win no matter what, um, or at least it should have been. Um, I needed it to be nighttime, which is what we got towards the end, uh, which helped me with my speed towards the end. I just, uh, I need a little less fuel in the car to help me uh, rotate that thing. And well, this is your fourth win so far on the season so far in 2022. So it's safe to say you're having one of the best seasons you've had in uh, some time in RSR competition. And do you think you'll be able to go for a win number five next week at Gateway? Uh, to be honest, I've never raced on that track, so I haven't even seen it yet. <laughs> so it's going to be a learning experience uh, this, I guess, two weeks, because we have off, I think, next week. Um, so we'll spend the next two weeks uh, doing some testing and figuring it out. Well, practice makes perfect, and hey, what a wait to have an off week for uh, a racetrack you've never been to. So, well, thanks for joining us tonight then, Brandon, and well, hopefully we'll see you in victory land again in two weeks. Thanks, guys. That's Brandon Six joining us here tonight from Victory Lane and going to move on down to our runner up on the night where Kevin King is stood standing by with Terry Radford. Yes. Oh, Kevin King, man, that boosted 31 looked hot there at the end. He had an opportunity. Uh, he wasn't close enough to make the the bumper stick to the, to the back bumper of uh, Brandon Six, but Talk about that charge in the last part of this race. So the speed was really high. It was really intense. How'd you get through the field to get a P2 tonight? Um, I just drove my ass off, really. Like, I was 
I had a strategy going that was going to work out in my favor. Um, I waited a pretty good bit before we pit. And then um, I think it was going to go well. And then, of course, we had that yellow. And then I sped on entry trying to catch up because we were so far back. Um, and then I just, just drove kind of, I wouldn't say as hard as I could, but about 95% just in case no yellow came out. And, um, you know, got through there and I was pretty surprised. And then I just didn't have enough time. I think, you know, a couple more, like five more laps to kind of work them over a little bit. I think it would have had a shot, but I wasn't going to hit them. Um, I, I was surprised to get second at that point, but... Yeah, I'm pretty disappointed I didn't come out on top. Well, I, mean, I I was I was rooting for you. I thought you had it there for a second, but man, what a run! P two came back from the late race penalty there. Uh, any shout outs for you this afternoon? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, everyone on the team. Uh, we got our last round one race for Road to Pro this week. Um, boosted Rev Grips VRS GSI. Uh, Battle Beaver, Tom for for supporting myself and Daniel uh, in Road to Pro, uh, you guys for putting this on. I, I had fun. I mean, you always want to win these damn things, but I had fun um, showing that speed. <clears throat> that that one run was nice, um, but we'll just have to try to get it somewhere else, I guess. I don't, it's surprisingly, that I have a I have a win at a super speedway, which is the first time in ten years that I've done that, and I can't get it done at a mile and a half. So we'll see what we do next time. Well, we'll see you in two weeks' time at Gateway. Sounds good. Thank you. And Nolan, we'll pass it on to you with the third place finisher of Connor Horn. So Connor Horn joins us now at a third place. And Connor, what a battle for you for that third place. And imagine when you started 14th. Wasn't quite what you're expecting to be at the end of the race. But why don't you walk us through your race overall and what it was like fighting for third in such a fierce fight with those guys. Yeah, that was nuts at the end. Uh, you know, started 14th, got caught on the bottom behind uh, Jeremy, and uh, didn't go anywhere. Everyone was using their tires up on the top. Uh, went back to like 15th after getting up to 11th, and people who were driving their tires off started falling off. Got up to I don't know, maybe eighth or something, and then right when we pit, yellow came out, uh, which kind of hurt. But uh, you know, if we weren't the only ones in that situation, we were able to rebound. Get decent track position uh, avoid the wrecks that happened uh just be ahead of them and then uh then it was strategy it was uh not really a strategy for tires it was a strategy for clean air and uh, two tires working here that kind of upsets me but uh i don't know it's whatever i guess kevin's fast but i don't know how <laughs> two tires worked i guess i should have taken on the final stop i just didn't think i was going to be able to get the track position at the end uh with two tires i think i was too far back with all the lap cars in the way so I took four, got up the second as quickly as possible. Thought I could challenge Brandon. I couldn't. I wore the right front off. Uh, then I tried to hold up Kevin. Uh, couldn't. He pulled a slide job. I uh, shoved him as far as I could into turn three. But uh, no avail. And then uh, just a battle for third. And kind of went back to the strategies you would pull in like the 550 package with high downforce. You just kind of take their line, block the air, and make them push tight. Uh, worked pretty much every time and also having to pinch someone on the very bottom like I did with Bradley Just pin him to the apron and hope he doesn't wreck you. I had a feeling it would wreck me just because I was putting him on the apron basically, but uh We got through his good racing. Uh, I think uh, I think uh, I was trying to remember who it was who almost cut the dog leg. I think it was Matt uh, That was crazy. That could have been bad, but uh, it was a good battle all in all uh, cool to finish third, but a little upset that I didn't have the pace of the 31 over 66 at the end because i know the 66 had two and uh kevin was way farther back than me so still don't really have these cars figured out but third's okay well fingers crossed then that you'll be able to at least uh, come up with maybe one spot better uh, throughout the course of the season and well hopefully as soon as two weeks when we go racing down a gateway yeah i like gateway uh fun track uh i like driving it i remember won a few way fix there uh, a few months ago uh with the updates of the next gen car i haven't ran it yet but gateway's usually a track that's fun in any car whether it's a stock car or an indie car or anything else uh pretty excited for it well thank you connor for joining us here tonight and well best of luck in two weeks i yeah, appreciate it thank you well that was it then for our top three finishers on the podium and well that's going to be about all the time we're going to have them for one night one week break next week monday and then we go racing once again at the start of June, June 6th, for the uh, 
next round at the Worldwide Technology Raceway at Gateway. For now, though, that's all we got time for here for more Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series action. My name is Edouard Rempel with Terry Radford beside me in the broadcast booth. Miguel Lloris, once again, doing an excellent job down behind the cameras for tonight's race. Tune in in two weeks' time when we go racing in Gateway.